Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very special Tuesday episode where we are not covering the regular High Roller Super Millions because we've got a very special edition coming up, a uh, one year anniversary. But to make that one a little bit more special, we postponed it for a week as it's part of the High Roller Week that's currently taking place over at GG Poker. So today we are actually covering the final table of a 1K event that was also played last weekend. It is uh, number three of the High Roller Week. We've got a pretty fun field. I am, of course, Kevin on the Coy, also known as Roland M. And with me, as always, just out of bed, is Nana Noko. How are we doing, Nana? Doing good. Um, yeah, although we're not playing the 10K today, we still have 10K names showing up at our final table. So, uh, you know, the play is going to be very high. Still, we're going to have a nice... Just think about it this way. It's going to be like a final table, but a little bit more satellite winners, guys, who are kind of random a bit more. Um, it should be fun. Yes, they are random, but I think a lot of these guys, you know, at least if you're playing actively over at GG and you play a lot of the different MTTs, you'll see a couple of names that you can possibly not be familiar with. Some of these guys are absolute grinders and they play all the time. It was a 1 million guaranteed. We had 957 entries, I believe. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the final nine names that are left over of this 1K because there is final table betting today. I did not place any bets, Nelanoko. I am pissed. PLO has been cruel to me. So I said, no more. I am taking a break. And on top of that, I obviously thought it was going to be kind of hard to predict the winner of a 1K. But these are the nine names. I know for you, Thomas Mulliker is going to stand out. And Elio Fox, who's here like every Tuesday. This is no longer the Roddy and Nano show. It's Roddy, Nano and Elio <laughs> Fox at this point because we can't do an episode without him. But I think we should start off talking about our chip leader a Russian player called the God of MTT. I have played so many hands with this guy. I've actually labeled him as someone that I should avoid because I don't know how he does it, but in every pot, whether it's a $100 or a $200 or a three or $500 bounty, whenever this, this guy, and I want to say a bad word, I won't say it, <laughs> raises me, he always has it. And it doesn't matter the table positions, doesn't matter if I'm button and I've got like ace king and he's big blind. He always has it. This dude like he beats me in pots nonstop 24 seven. So when I saw him chip leading this event, I'm like, you know what, to quote Nate Diaz, I'm not even that surprised because I actually think he's a very good player. Yeah, I don't know anything about this guy. I love his screen name, God of MTT, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, $10,000 worth of bets on him is a lot for, like for a screen name I've, I've never heard of, right? Um, because he probably doesn't, he doesn't play like the high stakes 10K tournaments, but like you said, he plays some of these $100, $200 regularly. So maybe all those guys believe they were checking today like, oh, we know this guy, uh, 40 total better. So if you look at that compared to the second place guy, you know, the average bet of the, the 40 people there, it's a lot higher. They have a lot more confidence than in this uh, Ionis Constance in second, who I also do not know. Um, but since you know God of MT, it doesn't entice you a little bit to just jump in for a little final table bet before things close. No, not at all, Roddy. No, 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 don't tempt me. I've had a, I've had a one that was a good week and then it turned into a disaster week. I even made a Royal Flush. I got the Royal Flush bonus with five card Oma and five ten. So that was kind of cool. But everything else, uh, just disaster. It's a brutal game. The nuts on the turn can look so bad on the river, Nananoko, and the king of spades rolls off and all the straights get there and all the flushes get there. It's a, it's a brutal game. So no, I'm sitting one week out and I also think it's going to be tough because, you know, this is a dude who does, he, I think he made it once into the high roller super millions. I don't know if he made our final table, but I actually believe just one time a final table probably satellited his way into it. I think he's good. But on the other hand, this is also an insane amount of money for him. So I don't know if he's necessarily going to show up and boss people around and, you know, be reckless or be able to face all the resistance that people will put on him because he's the chip leader. If I was going to bet, I would probably just put money on God of MTT because I think he's good. One mention, uh, one player that I want to mention too, before I let you talk about the big boys, is OP Pikachu. Apparently, absolutely nobody believes in him. A uh, total bet of $6 <laughs> by four people. So it's like three guys bet one and the other one bet $3. Like no one believes that this man can run it up. But he actually has 7 million chips. And I've also played a decent amount of hands with him because he's got an adorable Pikachu avatar. So he's easy to remember. And I actually think he's a pretty good player. So I'm really shocked to see that no one believes that he can run it up. 
it seems like today you're gonna know who's the extra value today. Um, if what you're saying is true, you know, this guy is not a total cakewalk, right? He's actually pretty good at the game. Mm -hmm. It's value there. 7.4 million chips. Um, he's got more than Moolocker by, you know, a reasonable amount and better odds. Just because I think Thomas is a, you know, a big name in the game, you know, we, they flipped the odds a little bit on, on poker shares, but seems like maybe that OP Pikachu has got some value, but no one believes. You don't feel, I'm gonna try to tempt you again. You don't, you don't feel a little sorry for him. Don't you want to at least get him double digit in total betting? This got single digits ever, I've never seen it. I've never been a man with principles in betting, and no call, but after uh, what happened in the last few days, I said no. Now I'm going to play by my own rules for a little bit, because being a DJ is fun, but you can't take it to the next level. So, no, uh, nothing from me today, but if I was going to splash some money around, I actually, I think I would have put some dollars on OP Pikachu with 7 million chips. This dude is absolutely not afraid to make moves, but I don't think he's crazy either. I think he will obviously cherish the position that he's in. A big spot for a lot of these guys like if i would have to choose between op pikachu or let's say you raise i fold or sagos who i'm a bit less familiar with i honestly think i would take that 15 to 1. yeah well um like i said you know the best but let's talk about the big boys um the first two the 10k players thomas mulocker elio fox I mean, Thomas was very impressive every time we've seen him, I believe, at the final table. Um, there was a one where he played Adamo. Remember, he got second place. He was sun running the table, destroyed the full final table and lost to uh, Yuri. I believe Moolocker was at that final table and he got in Queens versus Ace. Well, it was three bet pot, Queens versus Ace, and they both hit a set. River was an Ace and Adamo busted out a huge stack of Moolocker. But um, he's been very impressive. In my opinion, every final table I've seen, I I like betting on him. Ten point eight to one, like he's just a, he's such a big name. I don't know if you agree or not. Yeah, no, I, I can absolutely see that. Like uh, that's why I was a bit torn, right? Because on one end, I want to bet on the chip leader. It's God of MTT. I think he's a good play. He comes in with a ridiculous amount of chips. On the other end, it could also be one of these moments where Thomas Mulocker or maybe even Elio Fox, if he gets an early double. These guys are a little more familiar with playing for these amounts of money. So then I feel like they are perhaps able to send it a bit uh, more often and get a little advantage like that. So that's why I was just a bit torn. And I think that we also covered Viktor Ustimov once. I believe he made it to one final table of the High Roller Super Millions. I think he's all right too. So then he's in the pack and I'm like, well, am I going to bet on five guys? No, probably <laughs> not. I'd love to go to five guys. I haven't had a burger there for a long time. I was like, I'm not going to do it. But I think you make a yeah. good point, and I think a lot of people are going to agree with you. 47 people already bet on Thomas Mulocker, and I wouldn't be surprised if a few people throw in some extra chips just looking at him and hearing you talk about him. I believe Victor Ustamov did reach our final table before. It was like a special high roller week or something like that. He got a really big score. Um, from what I remember from that final table play, though, he kind of just played snug. It was like... It was one of those uh, final tables, maybe a million dollars for first. So he's like, oh, it was comfort zone. And he's just like, I'm getting these pay jumps, collected a huge score. So he doesn't regularly play the 10K, uh, but has for his track record, at least to be on our stream, it's very, very high, right? Because I don't think he's participated in too many of these events uh, to reach here. But Elio Fox, if there was a time to put money on the bottom guy, today might be that day. Because if Elio Fox can get one of those little doubles, he's 22 mm -hmm. to one. Um, he, and he's up against these opponents, I think he's going to have, he doesn't have to rely on the card. Well, he's still got to rely on the cards, but not as much as, say, the 10k Slipper Millions of all those sickos out there. Um, I don't know, I feel like today, if I had money, you, you, like you always say, put $100 down, I would put it on Mulock or Elio Fox and maybe a little safety bet on God of MTT, but uh, I'd put more than 10% of my bet on Elio Fox today, just because... And plus, four final tables. Back, I mean, not four total, four back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back final tables. It's pretty sick. Yep, on the Tuesday evening. Three of those being a 10K and then this one being the 1K. Uh, you guys have less than a minute left, probably less than 20 seconds to get those final bets in. So if you want to do it, lock him up right here, right now. So that's going to do it for our free pre-show segment. And that gives us a little opportunity to have a tiny chili chat before we go up ahead and take a look at the nine profiles of these guys and take a look at some of the hands they had on their journey to this final table of the high roller week number three event the 1k 
Nananoko, how was the weekend poker for you? I mean, I was checking out the lobbies and stuff like that, and I was very interested in how Nicholas Estet was going to do in that uh, WSOP. Or, I'm not sure what kind of tour. Was it WSPC? Was it? was it? the main uh, event, yeah. The yeah. main event? Because it was 750k up top, and he came as a chip leader. I'm like, this guy has apparently the biggest trophy case in GG Poker. Probably one <laughs> of the biggest winners ever on there. And I'm like, is he really going to ship another one? And apparently, he shipped that tournament for 750000 I was in shock. And I don't know if you railed it at all, Roddy. Can you t do you have any stories about this one? I, I have a little story. I wasn't railing it because I was actually playing myself. I was playing the Beat the Pros and uh, I was watching some of the StarCraft tournament that was taking place over the weekend. But I kept an eye on it because I wanted to do final table betting. And I heard your voice in the back of my head. You're printing money, easy money, just bet on Nicholas. And I was like, ah, everyone's going to bet on Nicholas. But it's not that easy to win a tournament, even if you come in as a chip leader. You know, if you combine a couple of the other stacks, they have more chips than him. So I actually bet uh, a little bit on the Egyptian, just in case that he would have a magical run. I thought that'd be very fun. Well, he busted first, was pretty unfortunate. I think A7 against A2, something like that. I wasn't watching it live. But then I also had a decent sized bet on the two Chinese dudes. There were two Chinese players and I was like, everyone is gonna fight over pay jumps, but these Chinese dudes, they're crazy. I'm gonna go for the Chinese lads. And at one point I take a look at the final table and I see there are three players left. My two Chinese boys, and Nicholas. And Nicholas is the short stack of the three with like 18 big blinds. I'm like, ah, what a bet, what a bet. I was like, I don't even care which one of the two Chinese guys wins it. We're flying over here. I'm doing well and beat the pros. There's like 150 left. I've got 100 big blinds. I check a little bit later and one of the Chinese guys is out and Nicholas is the chip leader. I'm like, no, I'm like, my mojo, it's gone. And then I get all in in the, the Bounty tournament on the Saturday. And this was like the final 100. So it was a monster pot for like 90 big blinds. Jacks against Ace Queen. I had Jacks pre-flop all in. Ace on the river. You know, the slow review. I had to peel it myself. I'm like, oh, Nicholas, I hate you. Check a little bit later. Nicholas wins the tournament. I'm like, damn it. Last 22 big blinds. Under the gun opens. Under the gun plus one. Three bets. I've got aces in the big blind. I jam my last 22 in. So the guy who opened calls and the three better folds. That guy is a 10. Flop is safe. Turn is a 10. And I'm like, damn you, Nicholas, instead you have ruined everything. I was flying. But yeah, it's, it's amazing that he uh, that he managed to win that one memes aside. You can't believe it, Nananoko. We actually had an interview that will be posted soon. And both of us said that we've been incredibly imp impressed by Nicholas, watching him over the last year. He's the one player that stood out. And this was before he made that final table and before he won that main event final table too. I don't know how he does it. He's such a sicko. Uh, I don't know why you didn't learn though. Remember Nicholas, he's the one that always gets you, right? You're, you, you bet on him before, he never won it, then you start to win it and you don't have any money on him again. And his spot seems easier. He's a bunch against a bunch of random guys out there and then he was the chip leader. You didn't want to bet on him. Oh my God, Roddy. But that was a good story. I'm happy with it. <laughs> it's never, but the fact is it's never easy. I and mean, when there were three left, one of the Chinese dudes had over like 55 big blinds. He had 17. I don't know how he turned it around, but he turned it around. Anyway, that was just a small part of my weekend poker. It's been a very eventful one. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the nine profiles of these nine players that have made it to the final table of the 1K of the high roller week over at gg poker event number three let's kick things off with this man a man that i've played a lot of hands with the god of mtt one apparently one of the gg spring series festivals says no super million appearances i thought there was one maybe i'm confusing him with another russian player then but uh this guy plays a lot of poker nanoko on any given day you sign up for a $200 bounty event or a $300 bounty event. He's going to be there. He's always there. We'll fire more than one bullet. Apparently over 1 million earnings in winnings. And I think he's a really solid player. I rarely see. He's aggressive, but not aggressive in a stupid way. He's just, uh, he likes to make life hard on you. So he's like the Nicholas Estet of low stakes because he plays everything. Because Nicholas Estet doesn't miss a tournament out there. And I guess they probably play some of the same tournaments. Because Nicholas Estet plays $200 tournaments as well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, he's, he's, he's experienced with him. Maybe they're the 
similar type of players. You know, this guy just wanted WCC main, this guy wanted a GGSF load 15 on uh, maybe two days his day. I don't know. Uh, but if we're looking at the scores he's posting, uh, pretty good for the buy and see plays. $125, $88, $200, and $80 and stuff like that, right? Um, but it's a big spot. We've got two commentators out there. One who always thinks pocket force hits a set. One that just dogs on you all day. So, you know, we'll see what he can do. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had. As this is actually quite a sick hand, Nana Knuckle. I looked at this and I'm like, oh, that sucks for Mr. Pikachu. I'll let you do the talking, but I think this hand speaks for itself. It's pretty brutal. Um, as played, let's see. So he check calls a little flush draw, turns the open-ended flush draw. His opponent bets, and then he goes all in on a big semi-bluff here. And it's a reasonable semi-bluff to make because with seven, six of diamonds, you know, the turn of five, you got extra outs. Um, your opponent could be multi-barreling a hand like, you know, King Jack, you know, Ace King. These hands have to fold. Are you still here, Nanoko? You're cutting up for me. I don't know if it's just you or if it's me. I don't know if anyone can let me know. I will figure it out. Uh, sorry, guys, for the inconvenience. I'm going to assume there's just a tiny technical difficulty on Nanonoko's side. Because I can still see everything else moving. So I think we're just going to wait for him. But I think he pretty much summoned this hand up. I think it all makes a lot of sense. Obviously going for the semi-bluff on the turn. OP Pikachu gladly calls with top set and receives the bad news that there is a four of spades on the river as we are currently trying to figure it out guys who is the one lagging is it me is it nanonoko is it the production i think uh i think it is just nanonoko oh you're back i can see you yeah again. hello Nano. i think it was me because my program just closed on its own but anyways um am i sound i'm sounding okay roddy you sound Sounds okay. right all right so anyways so I was saying this is a pretty good hand to send me bluff on a turn. Um, you pick up the extra equity and your opponent could be multi-barreling hands like ace, king, king, jack, ace, jack, or like a weak queen, like queen, jack, and doesn't really want to commit for all the chips because I'm pretty sure this is pretty far into tournament. This guy's got 16 million chips after. I love the semi bluff because if you're only doing this with the nutted hands and your opponent can play pretty straightforward against it. So yeah. All right, I am back. Now it was my program that just randomly closed, but I think you can hear me and I think you can see me. So it seems to be there are, uh, might be some issues. Maybe it's just the internet. Earlier today, Twitch had issues, Nenonoko. That's kind of like Google going down, okay? These things are not supposed to happen. Yeah, but I'm gonna... that's weird. Wait, if your program just closed that. down, like how's Zoom going down? They're like, this is, this is very confusing to me, but let's just continue. Yep. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the man that's chasing the god of MTT. But obviously this was a brutal hand for Pikachu, because if that hand doesn't play out the way it does, we've got a completely different leader. And the final table betting would have probably looked a little different as well. Taking a look at Ionis Konstas, formerly known as Bluff Me Not. I feel like we have spoken about him. He has apparently played in the High Roll Super Mario's 20 times and have indeed, has indeed made it to the final table once. Uh, no stranger. Two big spots by the looks of this profile. I don't know anything. I don't really remember this guy at all. But uh, he's got a lot of experience at the um, in the Super Millions 20 times. Um, one second place, pretty good score to kind of probably put him, you know, about even or something like that. Um, but no, I, I don't know much about him. But I'm going to imagine he's a pretty good player, real name ID. And, you know, he had a 1.2 million score apparently in this uh, party million. So it's, it's got to know what he's doing. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands to see if we can learn a little more about Ionis, where he was battling it out with Thomas Mulocker. This hand also took place very deep into the tournament. And uh, I'll let you do the talking, but I gotta say, I like that call on the river now, Anoka. That's the kind of a call that I'd be too much of a pussy to make. <laughs> nah, that's an amazing call, especially this far in the tournament. I'm gonna guess like final table bubble or final table bubble plus one or something similar. Um, defends the King 10. Check calls a bigger bet on the flop. And, you know, as it's pretty standard, check, check on turn, and the river comes to ace. He's probably like cursing at the screen for a second when the aids comes off. Mm -hmm. And then he checks, and his opponent bets uh, pretty reasonably big 1.7 million chips, Mulocker, uh, and decides to call up the king 10. And 
You know, it, it's an amazing call, really. Like, his opponent's probably raising any ace on the button, can easily have an ace. I'm trying to think, how did he find this call? Well, sure, he blocks some straight. He blocks the straight to Jack-10. He blocks some flushes. But the fact that his opponent checked back the turn discounts that a little bit. But it does help uh, to some degree. I think, the, as played, he's a put his opponent on an ace or nothing. And I think the thing that broke it down was... Since his opponent's C bet a little bit larger than normal, a lot of guys like to bet 33%, right? Like on these king high boards. It's all to like the 60, 70% bet on the on the flop. He was thinking, this guy probably wouldn't do that with an ace high, maybe on the flop as, as often, and just thought he's less likely to have an ace in two as well and made a good call. Indeed. Let's take a look at the next profile, as I feel like we're a bit behind schedule because we dragged the pre-show on a little bit longer, but I totally agree with everything you said. Apparently, this is the profile of Zagos, a player that I wasn't that familiar with, and I guess the reason why that I'm not that familiar with it is because he plays bigger than the $200 events, but maybe not the high roller super millions too often, like apparently the 2Ks and the 3Ks rather than the 10Ks. He has played in the high roller super millions eight times, apparently cashed just once so that tournament hasn't been very kind to him but then you look at the right side he won the big boy bounty king and that's a very fun event uh, you know they always have three different editions the 30 dollar one the 315 dollar one and apparently the 3150 one as well and he went to take that one down once so no stranger to big spots i mean i don't is mid six grinder the correct description for a guy who plays 1k's 2k's and 3k's pretty regularly and he's also got two million in earnings he probably just, like we're like well he doesn't play the super millions regularly so we're just gonna call him a mid-stakes grinder you know uh but i'm gonna guess he like you said you don't i was gonna say aren't you familiar with him but since he plays higher um uh, he's higher than a mid-stakes grinder in my opinion you know it's, it's funny because the one two three k's are now considered and five k's are now considered mid-stakes as long as you don't play high stakes 10k <laughs> yeah. uh. I'm with you, but <laughs> let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Zagos from Hungary had to see if we can learn a little more about him. Uh, I took a look at this one as well. This is actually quite a wild hand, Nanoko, so I'll let you do the talking, but obviously a very favorable river card for him. Yeah, this is this is rough, right? Like, because he gets put upon, he gets put all in on the turn, or at least his opponent goes all in, he calls it the queen. He's got a lot of outs, but like. You're not sure which out you need. You do need the queen, the jack, the club, you know? Uh, and Zafon has two pair and uh, he, got, he got crushed on their river card. Um, but like, you know, that very first hand, right? The guy went all in with the, the open ended straight draw um, and flush draw type hand to 6-7 suited. And you know, like this, people are also gonna do with two pairs and it makes you tough to play against. And the queen jack was forced to call here, even though he was behind. I mean, I don't say forced to call, but decided to call because it was still, 20 something big blinds for him to call it a shove and he's not a, he wasn't afraid got fortunate but his equity couldn't have been too bad given uh what he had again and what he was up against mm -hmm. that was the end of list flower but we do see a man sitting next to him and that is you raise i fold it is a name, name that i've definitely seen before so let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of you raise i fold to see if we can learn a little more about him as i believe we are uh, Looking at someone from Turkey, made day two of the five million super millions. Oh, he won the beat the pros ones. Well, I found a new idol. If I would have known that, I would have broken my final table betting rule for this week. Because that is a fierce tournament, okay, and an echo. The likes of Roddy participate in that every Saturday. So uh well done. It's actually, yeah, I mean it is a when did he win it? Huh? It doesn't really say. Twenty-four thousand dollars for first place. And he took it down. I guess that is his biggest achievement. Yeah, I'm guessing because you're like, where did you see him from? And it's probably from the Beat the Pros event. Um, I don't think he doesn't seem like he regularly plays too, and he plays pretty higher stakes too. He's participated in some 10Ks, Super Million six times. Um, I don't know. I don't know him, but uh, he's already made day two of the five million, the, the special one, right? So like, he can afford 10K, it seems. <laughs> Go ahead and take a look at one of the hands you raise I fought had, where I believe he was battling it out with a Brazilian player on the left side of the table, Jack 10. The man is not afraid. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. Uh, he calls a three bet out of position of the Jack 10 hearts, which I think is pretty reasonable at this, uh, given the sizings. 
but the flop he goes for a check raise min and I believe the logic here is he just wanted to close out the hand kind of right because a lot of guys they see bet with you know anything when they three bet like pretty much all the ace kings ace queens and those hands they can't even really call min raise on the flop because uh you know it's, a, it's still a lot of chips um he denies the equity it's a, it's an interesting play and I think it's important to make this play against the right opponent. If you do against the wrong opponent, you could be making the disaster, you know, fold eventually or something. Um, but, uh, you know, it's interesting. and I like to see it because I, I think uh, a lot of guys are always scared that when they get three bet and bet on this flop, they're like, oh, they always got aces, so I'll just call. And the king or ace rolls off and you end up losing the pot when maybe you shouldn't have. Mm hmm the one thing that I'm thinking of, right? Like, imagine a world where Gabriel had ace king or ace queen of clubs, and then they jam on you. And it, yeah. it really sucks, no? That's exactly the reasons why a lot of guys don't raise the flop, because they don't want to get blown off the equity of their hand, right? Like, if their opponent, even if their opponent's only aces or kings, and, you know, you, you would if you had check called the flop, you maybe turn that tender jack and double, but you might fold, you know? Depends, because I'm not 100% sure if you raise I fold folds if he gets jammed on on a flop because, you know, he's only got so many chips behind, like, 14 big blinds. So he might just be like, you know what, YOLO, hope you got ace-king <laughs> with clubs, I don't know. But uh, I just, it's definitely worth thinking this play is, is definitely reasonable. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the next profile then of one of the uh, other Russians that has made it to this final table. It's Viktor Ustimov. As you guys can see, he has played in the High Roller Super Millions as well and made it to our final table once. Apparently took third, indeed in a big one. My goodness, that was a WSOP edition. Wow, he got 755k for top three Nananoko. That's like winning two regular editions of the High Roller Super Millions. That's why the name uh, really stood with me. And as you guys can see, he plays plenty of high rollers. A very accomplished player. That's why I think when it came to final table betting, I don't think you really could have gone wrong if you would have put a couple chips on Victor Rustimov either. Yeah, um, you could have just sprinkled on anyone, really. Uh, but yeah, I believe, if I recall correctly, this is the one that maybe Connor Drynan won. Mm -hmm. um, but I could be wrong because it's September 6th, one of the earlier, one of those uh, huge ones. And... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about him, but uh, I remember in that one, he was just kind of like hanging in there, getting all these pay jumps and like just collecting the money. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had, where he uh, played a big pot. I mean, it's pre-flop all in. He's the one who got who raised. Mr. Redditon decided to three bet and he just went all in with kings and called. And, well, Nananoko, I think this hand kind of speaks <laughs> for itself. He got it all in pre-flop with kings. Well done, Victor. Yeah, uh, pretty much. I think I'll let you handle this one. <laughs> All right, let's move on then. And let's take a look at the profile of the guy that I mentioned a little bit during our final table betting segment. And that is OP Pikachu, an overpowered Pikachu, a mid-stakes grinder. And I do believe that for him, that's pretty appropriate, even though he did play in the 5K main event, but there is a good chance he satellited into that one. I never played the 10k, but you see him very often at the 100, 200, 300 dollar bounty events. Uh, at least over the last few weeks. Like I don't know if he suddenly decided to turn it up and play a lot. I've battled with him quite a few times, and I think he's he's all right. And that's why I was really surprised that literally nobody put any chips on him because I don't look at him and think it's like, okay, this guy's never gonna win it. I actually think he's quite good. And you can see on the right side as well, apparently took down one of the Sunday specials. We had another dude who finished second in the $88 Sunday special. Apparently, OP Pikachu managed to win it once. And like four people bet on him, total of $6 bet. So one guy's got, two guys got $2 on him, two guys are $1. I wonder if on our pre-show, did we bait someone else into betting? But usually when I see $10,000 on one guy, $5,000 on another guy, and I see a guy with $6 on him, I'm like, Alarm does go stay away because there's a reason why no one else is betting on this guy. <laughs> yeah, but that's a bad mindset then. No, 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 no. If it was easy to get rich, everybody would be rich. You gotta find the gems and OP. Look, you look at that avatar. You gotta tell me that this avatar doesn't speak volumes to you. Wouldn't you want to bet on a guy who's got an adorable Pikachu as his avatar on the poker tables? I mean, like maybe he's a Pokemon 
card game master, but he might he's playing the wrong game. He's playing poker. Okay, this is a completely different game. It doesn't matter how many golden foils you have or whatever they you know the Pokemon trading card game does. Uh, this is this one's real money. It's tough. You don't know much about the Pokemon trading card game. Do you? No. <laughs> No, I can see that. Neither do I, but I know that you're really out of your element there. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that OP Pikachu had. I think it's a hand that is also relatively straightforward. But the most interesting part to me, Nanako, is that he decided to raise it on the flop. First he checks and then he decides to raise the better. Um, do you like to play with the set on this board with two clubs? Little, somewhat, it's... draw heavy, but... Um, you know, it's reasonable, like, because if you try to flat call with a set of six like pocket sixes here in the small blind and your opponent has a big hand you you got to kind of get paid off full right because if you don't it's it's quite hard to make some money here since you only flop the set well, one in nine times or something so you need, need to try to find a way to get all the money in there when you can um I unless and what Unless you have pocket fours, then it's definitely a little more than one in nine times, but move on. <laughs> um, so no, I don't think the check raise on a flop is unreasonable. It's almost never unreasonable to raise a set on a flop on a flush draw board because they can always put you on a flush draw. Um, but would I just check call a flop a decent amount? I, I might. I probably would consider check calling a flop a lot because I don't like to blow out the... Well, I guess... Was there three guys in this flop or two? It was three. See, I don't like blowing out the big blind on, on accident sometimes, because sometimes the big blind's holding, like, Queen Jack, and he sees heavy action, like, okay, I'm out. So, uh, yeah. Uh, as played, not bad. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile, then, of a man that we have spoken about quite some, uh, well, quite some time already. We've seen him at our final table twice of the High Roller Super Variant. That's a while ago when you started hyping him up. At first, I didn't know too much about him. And then I can always keep my eyes open and I got to say, he looked really good the two times that we watched him play. Even if things didn't go his way, but he always got it in good or it was like a massive cooler. Didn't do anything silly, didn't do anything stupid. I am not surprised that this is a very successful poker player. Yeah, he's very, he's very, very good. Um... And the two times he's been at our final tables, right? He got six and seven, but he was very impressive in those ones, um, mm -hmm. especially the the seventh place one. I recall he it was a huge tournament. I think it's at least a million dollars at first. I remember a hand he was up against uh, Saquon, uh, whatever his name is, uh, other name, Spicy but uh, I chicken think it's sandwich. A, yeah, that guy. And he called with two nines, uh, and then he got bet in on a flop, bet on a turn, he jammed in all in for a huge amount of chips and made the correct read against like the ace queen on the low board where someone usually has aces all the time. And he goes with his reads, he's a great player. Um, and I think, like arguably the best player at this final table besides Elio Fox. High praise coming from Nenonoko. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Thomas Mulliker had, uh, which was, Kind of an interesting one. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a, it's a wild nice. one. Go ahead, Nanako. I like this hand a lot. Like, so earlier we saw him fire away with the against the King Ten, and you know he got called. But you can see that he's going for these pots, and that's why I like his position a lot at this final table, up against a bunch of guys we don't know who he's going to bully his way through. He raises Queen Jack, checks around on the flop. Decides to bet the turn because no one bet on the flop. They seem weak to him. Maybe they got like a middling strength hand, like a Jack-10, a King-Jack, who knows? I don't know. He bets, gets called everywhere. So when you get called in two spots on the turn, you know, like it's kind of saying someone's got at least a King, definitely a 10 at, at the worst, right? And four flush comes, he bets big, and he takes down. He bets big, and the reason he bets big is if someone had the ace of spades, I think he thinks they play a little bit faster, whether they bet out themselves on the turn or raise or maybe bet the flop. So I think he thinks at best they got the jack of spades, maybe the queen of spades. But even then, it's very hard for those hands to call for a big bet this deep in the tournament. He's just like, I'm going to rep it. And he repped it good. I'd be so scared to do it, though, into two people, right? Like, if you do it against one, then it's like, whatever. They either have it or they don't. But into two people takes a lot of courage to find these kinds of bets. To be funny, to be fair, um, betting to two is scarier, right? Because there's two guys to call. But maybe it's better because 
it makes the other guy like let's just say the guy the first guy to act after the bet he's got holding the queen of spades the second nut and he sees someone else he's like oh but this guy might have it or the guy who hasn't acted might have it it sucks so he ends up folding you know he ends up getting the best hand to fold or whatever something like that could definitely happen to people but say it's heads up they like never fold mm -hmm. all right means we have two more players to cover first up or the second shortest stack coming into this final table our 1k of the high roller week three number event number three is bankrupt you Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of Bank Rob to you. As he had a pretty fun hand as well. Uh, it says Russia, but it shows the Austrian flag on the table. He's got a Canadian flag. I don't know what's happening, Nanonoko. We don't know anything about it. He says that he's going to bankrupt us. Looking at the scores on the right and his GG Poker winning so far, I don't think he has really bankrupted a whole lot of people yet. But obviously, no stranger to playing $500 in one case. But it's kind of a uh, empty profile. Yeah, you know, hopefully he doesn't go bankrupt before he bankrupt GG. But uh, I'm going to guess he doesn't normally play on GG besides the special series, right? Because all of the scores we're showing you is WSOPC events, WSOP side events, stuff like that. So maybe he just comes around during the, the series. Mm -hmm. Perhaps just uh, looking for some of those bigger fields. You can see we're putting in a finish like. 305th of the 525 main event. I mean, not bad. I believe that's the same one that I played, but I did better than me. I'll give him that much and definitely got a better payout too. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands bankrupt you had then on this unit to this final table. Oh, this one is actually so sick. Nana, no call unless you do the talking, but this is just insane. Flops, yeah, he just bet, bet, jams. His opponent's holding. You know, ace jack here, like <laughs> nine nine. What a funny run out. Uh, the guy makes the call and uh, he gets paid off big with the the, the queens here, right? Like, ooh. And the, the, how can the guy fold an ace, right? Because like, yeah. if his opponent's holding an ace king, you know, he still chops it up. Just brutal. It's actually the best run out you can have possibly. Like, because you see another nine on a river, you're like, oh, they could have a nine, but it's even better for you because if they have an ace, they're never folding. And mm -hmm. he knew that. He went for all the chips. Some guys are like a little shy. They bet like 1.3 million. They're like, oh, we'll leave them a little bit of chips, but not. Nah, maximum is definitely the way to go. Yeah, I like this. I think this is a dream run out where it's like, please have the ace. Because if you have the ace, you can never fold in. Because if you're folding an ace, you're kind of a fishy. So. Uh, the player from Japan did make the call, and unfortunately, I guess that was the start of his downfall and didn't make it to the final table. Beautiful run out for a bankrupt you. Doesn't tell us too much about the way he plays, right? I mean, he flops his set. It's a monotone board, but he still bets the set because sets are good. Bets the turn after he makes a good full house and then goes for all of it on the river. I, I, th I don't think many of us would have done anything different there. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the man who perhaps is the most hyped player coming into this final table because this is four Tuesdays in a row that we are taking a look at his profile and we are talking about him. How the hell do you even do that, Nanonoko? Like I said, it used to be the two of us, now it's the three of us. Elio Fox has permanently joined us. He's done it again, and this was a big field too, almost a thousand entries, but that didn't stop Elio Fox from making another final table. Yeah, back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back final tables is really, really sick. And he's been on a heater this year um, in, in the Super Millions as well, right? Because he, he wasn't doing good in the beginning, but when he started to make the final tables over and over and over again, you know, he's climbed back his way back in. Um, sick player, get a little double, we got some fireworks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hand that Elio Fox had. That allowed him, I guess, to still be with us. Uh, taking a look, if I remember the hand correctly. Uh, it helped. It wasn't the biggest hand, but a little action here with the King-10. And didn't have a whole lot to show for it, Nenonoko. But it didn't stop Elio Fox from putting a lot of pressure on the man who is a chip leader coming into tonight. Yeah, and he knew he had to go for a very big bet. Um, you know, of course, if his opponent has an ace, he's going to fold. But if his opponent has an ace, it's even hard to call against this. Because what does he, what does his opponent beat? Just the king 10, really, right? Because, you know, queen 10 got there. You know, jack x got there. And these hands would bet big, too. Um, it's a great bet. It's a good bet size. And I think it's very credible. I guess it just shows what Elio Fox is capable of. 
Well, guys, that's going to do it for our pre-pre-show and the pre-show. And that means it is time for our favorite part of the evening. And the main reason why you guys are here and the main reason why we are here is the final table is about to begin. I guess we're going to have a little seat selection process because I don't think they've done that yet. Gives us time. Ooh. You know, by the oh, tournament. Damn, is there an emote? I got happy. <laughs> no, no, I think these guys are actually emote spammers, mate. Like I told you this before, but in the hundred dollar and the two hundred dollar bounties, everyone is spamming emotes nonstop, and sometimes in pleasant ways, sometimes in bad ways. But it becomes kind of fun as well when like somebody knocks you out in one tournament, but then you're playing another tournament at the same time, and you get at the same table, and it's like the immediate hello, even though they don't have to like video at all, but they like to spam emotes. And then look, I was thinking. We have so many stats, right, of almost one year of the High Roller Super Millions. You know, nobody really kept track of our prediction game when we came to, into these final tables and we picked a winner. What do you think the score would be between us? I think I've got more than you for sure. What? Um, no, 100%. Like, I've picked at least 10 winners, haven't I, Roddy? Would you say? I, I, Close. I, I, I feel know. like we you should are keep still track. living in the past. After this special year, we should maybe start keeping track somewhere. I have our production keep track for us just because uh, I, want, I want people to know how much of a better uh, picker I am than you. Um, if you would add me out on one and it's like Conan, then it doesn't even count because you're completely disqualified from that pick and you know it. But I, I think you're living in the past former glory now, no, The first 10 weeks, <laughs> sure, you're on fire. The first 20 weeks, I was still warming up. But over the last 25 weeks, I've owned you so hard in the prediction game. It's not even close. I probably picked like eight winners and you picked one at best. Okay. Uh, well, Roddy, then fine. Go first. Who's going to win today's special tournament? Mm, it is a bit lame, but I am going to go with God of MTT because I am familiar with him. I know that he's good. I don't think he's going to be afraid to make the difficult calls if he feels like he's good. And I think he's just going to play the same way as he always does. And in my experience with him, that means he plays a good game of poker. You just like it because he's got the Elky avatar. Because you're such true, a big true. Elky fan, right? Like no, the, got this guy is setting it up. Like if he put your face somewhere in the avatar, you'd be all you put your whole bankroll on final table betting on this guy. My gosh. Well, my pick today, Thomas Mulocker, high roller regular. Sure, he's got 6.5 million chips, but give him one double up, and we've seen it. He's going to make. I think he's just going to overtake the final table, honestly. Uh, I think it's good, smart from God of MTT to take position on him because he knows how sick of a player he is. And so that's the funny thing. Think about it. He took position on Mulocker, and he went out of position against the second place guy, who is also a guy who plays high roller tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Why do you think that he ended up there? Like, I, I would uh, yeah, I guess. Well, I'll tell you why. He's, he wants position on Mulocker, and he wants position on OP Pikachu because that's the guy that doubled him up in that 6-7 suit of hand against the pocket queens. He's like, well, got to take position on the guy I want all my chips against. And maybe yeah, he disrespects the second bit. place guy. He yeah, disrespects worry. them. Yeah, apparently. I feel like you have to worry a little bit about Bluff Me Not. And this makes it a bit inconvenient because now it's more likely that you're going to play these monster pots with the guy that's on your right. And it's the only guy that you don't want to play for all the chips with. Because if you guys take a look on the left side, you can see these are very big pay jumps for a 1K buy-in. You know, next if they would go out in nine plays, they still walk away with seventeen thousand dollars. But after that, it's plus five buy-ins, plus eight buy-ins, plus ten plus buy-ins, and it just goes up and up like that. I would have probably preferred to avoid a guy with 17 million chips, but I also understand having position on Thomas Muller. Yeah, um, but you know what? I know you say they're going to play big pots, but the truth is it doesn't happen, especially when you got more chips than the other guy because they're scared. They, they're they basically going to say, okay, well, he opened. I'm just going to let it go because I, I know he can put pressure on me. And I think he's going to be all right, uh, even though he's out of position against the second place all guy. In. Our first yes. all-in of the evening. A little over 10 big blinds for Elio Fox with pocket eights. And let's see if God of MTT. I mean, it's it's quite some chips. It's the one thing you don't really want to see with King Jack, where you're like, ah, 2.4 million to potentially win 6.3. Elio Fox is going to do this with sevens, nines, tens, sixes, fives, fours. But God of MTT does not make the call. Yeah, uh, you can't really... 
if you make that call, you could be potentially doubling up someone that you don't want to double up to. And it's, it's a, it would be, I'd be very surprised and loose. Um, this is going to be interesting. Well, Moonlocker has got City on 24 big blinds. It's in a very bad spot here. Um, but we'll see what his opponent does. Just calls here, so maybe he wins his pot. Come Take on, a don't look. fail me. Victor Ostimov in the big blind with ace four decides to let it go. Elio Fox let go of pocket fives. This kind of a board, does that favor Thomas Mulocker or bluff me not? Favors, I mean, it always favors the pre flop raiser. Um, but I think he is scared of those pocket pairs sevens, eights, sixes. Mm -hmm. Some ace highs. So he's like, well, if I fired a flop, I got to put multiple barrels in there. Sees a bet. Mulecker's probably thinking, like, this, this, the way he's betting, too, looks like he's got like sevens or eights. Can't he make a play at some point? I don't know. Uh, he's, not, he's thinking, though. Mm. No clubs. Yeah, it's obviously it's risky to make a play there because your opponent does have something good and you're putting yourself in a very compromising spot. I am a little bit surprised though that he didn't try to see bet, even if it was small, because I think there are a lot of hands that uh, Ionis Ronstas would fall. I think the thing is he, he, he probably knows his opponent pretty reasonably well considering he also plays high stakes and just like, well, I don't think he's flatting hands like 7-6 suited, um... Queen Got Jack it. suited. Maybe he thinks he's three betting those hands or just folding. Cause, and it's just like he's very pocket pair and uh, ace queen heavy. And it's just like, yeah, it's not worth betting right now. Similar position, just a bit different. It's OP Pikachu opening up with King Queen of Hearts. There is one heart on the board. And that ace ace deuce flop doesn't look very juicy. Let's see if OP Pikachu does decide to see bet. Nope, he's yeah, going very... to check too. Very similar logic, I think. It's like very ace queen, ace jack heavy. Um, he's got like the pocket pairs. He doesn't think they're gonna fall. He's probably just gonna check. Look, if you can just smooth call these hands, bet what? Is that a th quarter of the pot and win them over and over again? Like it's, this is easy game. Well, oh, it gets cold though. You want to be the first one to go for the check pool. The second time you're like, and is this guy just making the same play every single time? Uh, the eights are still good, but this has to be a little bit confusing for Konstas as well. He definitely should be worried. And he, that's the thing, when you're worried, you let your opponent get there. Pikachu's got to feel real good about this. It's obviously unlikely his opponent has an ace with two aces on the board and the check on the turn. So this queen, even though clubs do get there, maybe that's... I mean, it's still a big spot. I wouldn't even hate a check here in Nanoka. I know it'd be a He big... should check 100%. Yeah. Um, because his opponent could have clubs, his opponent could have like maybe an ace 10 that's just playing cautious. Plus, mm -hmm. he's better off trying to pick off a bet than to value bet himself. Because if he bets here, like two eights is going to be like folding so fast, he's not going to get any value from betting. Um, so check is definitely the, the correct play. Pikachu will receive the good news. 2.6 million chips heading to him. It seems like a couple of extra people did put some money down on him, by the way. Total bet went over 1,000. So we went from $6 to a total <laughs> bet of over 1K. Well, guys, I hope it's not because of the things I said, because if he, if he doesn't end up winning it, don't blame me. But I really don't think it's a bad bet with the amount of chips that he came into the final table with and the player that he is. Some guy out there was watching the show is like, well, Roddy says it's a good bet. I'm full bankroll in there, 1K in there. And yeah, uh, good luck to you. Wow, big wow. play here. Wow, that is so wild. That is big... so wild. We didn't know much about him, but he does play high stakes, right? And like 3Ks, 4Ks, 5Ks, and that's a big play. Maybe he listened to the pre-show. It's like, okay, you told me Ustamov was just trying to ladder up. Well, then I'm going to make more plays out of you know, it's really funny. Uh, you remember the Russian that we covered last week at the High Roller Super Millions, uh, Sergei, who was just chilling there. I knocked him yeah, out yes. the pros last Saturday. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. The guy were he... like, we don't know where his chips went, but they're moving. Exactly. It was like every time we blinked, either at 5 million or 3 million. 
Uh, I got him with a good old ace and nine. It was a very straightforward hand, this button against big blind. He made a flush on the river, but it was a double paired board. And I already would have had a full house with a nine because it was like a uh, ace, nine, nine, deuce, deuce. So the nine alone would have been good enough. So I was a bit surprised that he went all in with a flush on a double paired board. But maybe he just liked the commentary and he's like, I'll give you a bounty, Roddy. I'm like, thank you, Sergey. <laughs> yeah. He's probably pissed up at you. He's like, you don't remember what happened. I was at that final table the whole time. He's like, I'm going to... Oh, he probably disrespects you. He's like, this Roddy, he's going to call it like Ace Rag and I'm going to get all the chips or whatever. Right? Um, well, but my com my fellow commentator knows how to play a little bit. Maybe he's not the best, but uh, he's, not, he's not a walk in the park. God of MTT makes trip eights here. Pikachu has absolutely nothing. I kind of even wonder why we were in that hand to begin with, with 10-6. I mean, it's suited and all, Nananoko, but pretty big spots here as Victor Rustimov picks up Queens. Let's go back to that play from Zagos. Like, it's not that Victor Rustimov has a tiny stack or that he's always going to fold there. I thought that was reckless. Like, it worked out and it's cool. Yeah, you block kings and queens, blah, blah, blah. But that's a lot of chips and the pay jumps are pretty big at this final table. Look, if you want the top spot, you got to make some calculated risk. Um, we've seen guys who are usually the hyper aggressive guys are the guys who get very far in our super millions, right? Like uh, Adamo, you know, like uh, Volkman, right? These guys put some big pressure on a lot of times, though. They're risking a lot of chips. And if things go out your way a few times, though, you can really steamroll it. In that spot, he was jamming on a 30 big blind and a 20 big blind stack. The 30 big blind stack, Ustamov, especially if he's very ICM aware, which I think he is based on what I remember, he's got a very tight calling range if you think about it, right? Because he doesn't want to bust. Um, Ace Kings call, he'll call Ace King. And I think Jacks plus tens, he think about it. Um, Ace Queen definitely in the muck. You block King Queen, uh, you block Kings and Queens and, and stuff like that. So it's, I think he's definitely winning chips by making that play. It's just mm -hmm. like, when you get to this final table and you, you do that play and you get called, you feel like the biggest idiot and you never make that play ever again. Uh, but it's about going for you, what you think is the right play. And I like it. Um, I'm just wondering, can he do another play, which is maybe three bet, you know, to 1.8 million if his opponent jams, you know, he just folds. And I think it's reasonable too. So you're just telling me that he's made that play quite a few times and it has never backfired on him. So he just keeps doing never. it. Never. <laughs> Because this is his first final table ever in his life. <laughs> no, no, I um, believe. Uh, so like on flip side, I was saying like, if he's got one, he makes it three bets. The reason why that play is good is that, you know, you can save yourself in case they wake up some, but it's bad if your opponent puts you making a play on him, re reshoves on you with like an eight of like pocket tens or nines, which would have folded to begin with. So it's always pros and cons to all the plays out there. There's no absolute. It's just what you think is going to be the most optimal against your opponent. Let's see if Bang Drop U decides to defend his big blind here with the suited king. He does not. I wouldn't mind thrusting in that 1.2 big blinds or whatever it was there with a king eight suited. I think it's standard to call, uh, but I did see him snap open fold jack 10 suited earlier in like an earlyish position. So. My read is this guy is just going to hang around for a bit. What's up with King Queen so far, Nanako? We've been live for 13 minutes, and I feel like every hand has a King Queen in the mix. <laughs> and uh, King Queen's been behind like every single time. It's, up, it's been up against Ace Queen, Pocket Eights. This is King Queen all in. <laughs> yeah, King Queen all in. This should be interesting because OP does a kind of similar play. Remember, he had the King Queen, he checked. Uh, yeah, everyone's afraid of this Zionis' uh, flat calls. I think Pikachu is going to be a little less worried now. He just found a power up for his Pikachu. <laughs> Thunder, Thunderbolt is extra powerful at this point, Nanaka. That card makes you feel real good because, like, you're like, oh, I want to check it down, but now he can go for some value. Um, I would definitely be betting for value. A pretty big bet, more than half pot. Over four big blinds. Pikachu will take another one down, and he's up to 9.2 million. I mean, I don't know who followed my advice, putting some chips on him, but I got a feeling pretty good about this. Like, what is he right now? He's like uh, top 
five ish, right? It's making yeah, moves. I'm looking at the stacks a little bit too, and you know, we're actually pretty deep, aren't we? Like, there's no like five big black guy hanging out there controlling the action. Like, it's just everyone, and everyone's kind of playing kind of calm so far. Well, besides Zagos, I feel like Zagos is the one that's going to shake things up today. Yeah, at these final tables, they always rolled uh, back the blinds four levels, I believe it is. So maybe like some of these guys were very short making it into the final table and on the final table bubble. And yeah, then they roll back the blinds and you're like, oh, I've got a little more wiggle room. I always wonder if there's like a strategy, like let's you're sitting on like five big blinds. You try to hang in there, try to make the final table so you can get like 10 or 12 big blinds or something and really have some yeah. wiggle room to play. Uh, that's something that people absolutely keep in mind. There's often a pretty big pay jump as well between like 10th and 9th because making mm -hmm. final table is prestigious and stuff. So. Alrighty, so oh. could be fun, potentially, depending on what happens. Ooh, double gutta. But it's hard to bet here with 5-3 yeah. suited because the guy who checks back the flop from early position, they always got ace-king, ace-queen. And he's mm -hmm. got ace-king. What was also very annoying is that, like, even if you are double gutted, like, th two of your outs are basically bad because if another hard rolls off, are you really in love with your straight draw? If I was Thomas Mulecker, I would just let this one go. He probably he will. will. Um, raising seems kind of dumb because, say, you make it 2.5 million, your opponent's just like, okay, I hope you don't got it. Goes all in. Mm -hmm. you, you just burn your hand, too. Kings for Pikachu, Ace Jack for Bankrupt You, but I'm starting to get pretty tight uh, vibes from Bankrupt You. Let's see if Elio Fox feels like this is the moment to make a move. Obviously, Constas has been very active so far. Elio, I'm sure, is aware of that. Would be yeah, a bad moment like, to well, make a move. It's also like, oh, I'm up against another 10k player. Like, you know, changes your vibes. If he saw like one of these $200 guys open, he would have snapped forward with his hand, but now he's suspicious, but save those guys down there who had reasonable hands for the stack sizes mm -hmm. let's see how pikachu decides to play his kings i'm expecting to bump it up to maybe 1.3 1.4 no, that's a little bit too small out of position i'm gonna guess like 1.8 he million. wants some uh, he wants to get some chippies here though it would it's the thing is the oh, problem wow. is it looks like it looks like aces and kings when you make it 1.3 million so he's trying his best to not make it look like it when they make it 2.2 million, it also looks like aces and kings to me, mate. <laughs> yeah, Pocket eights for Elio Fox. He's going to rip this one in, I think. Maybe he min raises. I'd lean towards ripping in for sure. Hard to play. When Zagos has ace 10 offsuit. He decides to let it go. Thomas Mulliker has king jack. Just not really the kind of hands that you want to be calling off with. So Elio Fox will hang in there a bit longer, picks up a couple of much needed big blinds. He's just got pocket three this time. Let's see how Viktor Uzdimov decides to play his pocket eights. I think threes are just going to open fold, to be honest. I think so too. But OP, he's got the ace, ten of hearts, ten nine of diamonds here. I think we could get some very interesting hand coming up. You really go with OP over Pikachu. Hey, it's OP Pikachu. What do you mean? Like, or maybe it's opponent Ikachu? No, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> you know, OP often stands for overpowered, right? I don't know if he actually put it there. I thought it was the original poster. Well, that's possible too. <laughs> just... In the world, in the world of gaming, whenever someone says something is OP, it means it's too strong. <laughs> when people whine about balance in a game, like Ace Ten of Hearts is overpowered. Because it always flops it straight. No, no, no. It's going to be hard to do it yeah. this time. I'm like, when's the last time I hit a straight with ace 10 suited? I'm like, my <laughs> gosh. All right. Jack 8 folded. It was actually turned out yeah. to be the best hand. It's a pretty ugly flop for all of them. I guess Ustimov is the only one who's like, hmm, there is a chance my 8s are good here, but... It's always a bit scary to bet with an under pair into two other guys. And the worst thing is he's also not holding the eight of spades. So with a rare off chance that he does hit his eight, like you're going to feel really good, but then you're also like, okay, now I've got another concern. Yes, I make a set, but 
is it the best set well it's checking around still so far i feel like victor should throw in like a third pot or something just try and control the pot a jack would have bet by now in my opinion he's letting two guys get free cards that seems like quite tricky mm -hmm. eight of uh an eight on the river would have been a disaster now the god of mtt completely misses and it's pikachu who actually ends up with the best hand i think i'm with you because that seven is technically a good card like i can understand that maybe you're a little hesitant on the flop you don't want to let things get out of control but if then that guy checks to you again and you know that pikachu is not like super wild i think i would have liked to see a tiny bet with the eights on the turn yeah it like you're letting two guys get a free card pikachu makes an ace I don't know if he needs to bet this, but um, he's one to hand. Yeah. The thing is, see, when you're trying, you can reach these big final tables. Sometimes you're like, I'm going to play cautious, I'm, but you're giving away a lot of free equity in hands that, you know, kind of helps you boost your stack a little bit. And, you know, that's what happens for who's the mob. Pikachu does decide to bet. And one million chips. Not much that uh, any of the other two can do about it. And he is flying. He's just chipping his way up to the top. Pikachu came into this final table with 7.4 million chips. After this hand, he'll be over 10 million. And didn't even need to do anything too wild or crazy for it. Yeah, that's the thing. And if you're getting free five cards, it's a brilliant spot. I wouldn't really like to see Victor call these two eights all of a sudden. It just seems like it'd be backwards. You put in the money when they get there, then, you know. Yeah. But that's also, like, one more reason to go for a little bet on the turn. Because you know that, like, you hate every king, you hate every queen, and you hate every ace there. Uh, probably even every ten, right? It's just like, oh, why don't we try to take it down? Nothing is happening. Let's fire out a little bet. Totally agree with you, man. Pikachu and Consas. Consas not won a battle from the small blind with Queen 10 off, I believe it was. I don't think you raise I fold has played a single hand yet. And I can't really blame him for uh, not playing the 9 3 offset. Come on, Roddy. Look at his screen name. It says you whoa, raise whoa, and I whoa, fold. Whoa. Stop. Oh my god, what? <laughs> what? I only saw oh. the aces and queens, and now I realize that the god of MTT has jacks too. What the hell is happening here, Nadanoko? And the positions force him to put some chips in right now, so he's going to lose some chips. <laughs> this is where Elio Fox is like, guys, like, put some, put some chips in the middle. Just like, don't you guys dare to make it all small, like, fall to the small blind, and then it's a limp and a fall. He's like, no. Yeah, he's like, I like yeah. this. I uh, like he's already this. pretty happy. Yeah. There's no other mm -hmm. play here than just to all in, right? That's the only pretty play. much like could have waited five another... more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's gonna jam. God of MT gets has to fold because it's seven million yeah. chips he'd have to play for. Um while he you hate folding jacks, this one seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like there are many moments where I hate it, and this obviously not because we now see that the other guys have queens and aces, but this is, a, it's very gnarly. I can sort of understand the call if you can convince yourself that they both have either ace-king or ace-queen. But then you're like, Ileo Fox must have ace-queen. And then Victor Uzimov needs to have ace-king. I mean, it's... I'm thinking about it more and the jacks, it could call. It's not that bad because you think no. about Uzimov here can reshove worse than jacks. He can shove tens actually, right? Because big mm -hmm. blinds, short stack, squeeze shoving nines or eights and... He wants to out shut. Yeah, you know what? The Jacks, it might be a call, to be honest, the more I think about it. Um, I it wouldn't hate on... it. Yeah. yeah. Both have Ace King. It's disaster if you fold here. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, really no, bad. If we compare it to all the other moments where we saw people fold Jacks, like, there was not a single time that I was really on board with it, whether they were ahead or behind. If he would fold here, it really sucks. Well, you know, the nice thing here, Nananoka, is that you get closure because you get to see what they have immediately anyway. And closure is very important if you're in for a long run at the final table. Let's see if God of MTT yeah. can find a fold. But I think a lot of times when you have closure, you end up folding a bit more. And that's a nice fold. Yep. What happens? 
Yuck, yuck. <laughs> a full double up coming. Oh, no. Never mind. Never mind, Roddy. Never mind. Ah, oh, that's sad for you, Leo, because there were some extra chips in the middle, too, of course. God of MTT hits us with the few. Everyone spamming uh, emotes at this point. Elio Fox came in as a short stack, and he is the first one to say goodbye to the rest of the table. Victor Ustimov hits him with the sorry. Did you see the amount of emotes that just were thrown out? Welcome there to the 1K tough. circuit. <laughs> Everyone throwing emojis, but the guy who got his ace is correct. He's, this computer is already in the trash can, I'm pretty sure. I think hey. Elio Fox will survive. Maybe five time final tables. That'll be a good one to make another final table in and the anniversary edition because yeah. he's got four. Yeah. I mean, it's really impressive to make a final table of a field of almost a thousand entries. I mean, the other ones, you know, it's like 160, 170 entries. We're like, all right, we know you're good, EO. We know you're capable of it. But to do it of a field with 957 entries, too, definitely even more impressive. And nothing you can do there, right? We've all been there time and time again. You get a sweet spot, a dream spot for aces. You're like, this is what I need to really make something out of tonight. And then a queen rolls off. It is what it is. As uh, Kunstas is actually going to lose a couple of chips here. I wonder how Pikachu is going to play his hand. He's going to jam all in, I'd hope. 40 big blind jams seems reasonable. Lots of forward equity. Um, big stack three. If like in these spots, you want the big stack three betting you, even though they they cover you, kind of because they're more likely to be three bet bluffing these king jacks, king queens. So, ah. this, yeah, mate, he's off to such a good start. OP Pikachu is now at fourteen point four million. He has doubled without really being at risk, right? As we have another potentially big hand here. Thomas Mulocker has pocket tens. The god of MTT has ace king offset. Uh, a couple yeah. aces are going to get folded here, so that looks good for Thomas Mulocker. It's my guy and your guy, too. Please don't envy this way. Like, I know you've been picking winners so often, but this, this is not what I want to see. Don't get Thomas that Mulocker is going to jam here, right? Because he's a short stack, yeah. Yep. That's... And he's Thomas Mulocker. He's not scared. And he folds. Not kidding. <laughs> here we go. Thomas... Well, two aces have been folded, so it kind of feels like if God of MTT wants to win this, he's going to have to find a couple kings, Nenonoko. That final ace is going to be hard. Making a straight is hard when your opponent has pocket tens. This is not totally a flip. Thomas Mulocker is the favorite. As you guys can see, the he board won. is favoring him. Ooh, that was paint. It always gets scary when it's paint. Can nah, he avoid he's the case? Because I picked him to win, Roddy. We can't end him now. There we go. See? Told you. Oh, well done. It's uh, it's so funny because when you see the cards initially, you're like, oh, it's a flip. But if you know what we know, where uh, multiple aces have been folded, you're like, this is actually not a flip. This looks really good for the tens. How about like we add the feature where you can show your cards mid hand and all in? So like. You're rooting for your ace, and everyone just throw out the ace at the same time, and they're like, oh, God, I'm drawing dead. And then it still gets there because it's a one-outer, and that would put some salt on people, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, that salt already exists when everyone... After, if somebody hits, like, an ace on the river, then the rest of the table is like, I had an ace. I had an ace. And it's like, don't do that, guys. You're not making the other dude feel any better. It's like, hey, you got it in really good, man. He only had one out. It's like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Rough start for the God of MTT, but the good news is that he had so many chips and everybody else is kind of tossing chips around that he is still the chip leader. So even though he has lost, what is it? Five million. Uh, yeah, around four million-ish chips since his final table has started. He's still on top. Nothing to feel too bad about. All right, Roddy, I got a question for you. Who's going to play a hand first? You raise, I fold, or bankrupt you? They're both on 14% VPIP. They haven't played a single hand today yet. I think you raise I fold. Just because he's got more chips. But maybe no, just because... the guy with shorter chips, less chips is the more desperate, so he gets in more. Well, he will go all in before the other guy. But I believe that the other guy will put in some chips before because there is a chance that it's just going to be Konstas, also known as uh, Bluff Me Not, or previously known as Bluff Me Not. As look at Pikachu. He's, letting, he's probably seen already that Zagos makes a crazy move or two. Zagos opening things up with King Eight of Diamonds. Mate, you gotta admit, right? In the first 30 minutes, OP Pikachu, 
he looks all right, no? He definitely, he's grinding the way he, he would be grinding normally. Uh, from what I've seen, it's definitely playing well. And if those people, whoever put that last thousand dollars on him is feeling good. Uh, wow, King 8 suited, calling the three bit out of position. This Zagos is just, he's in he's there. Wild. I'm like, he's, he, he's spicing things up right now because this is not a standard call. Flops a flush draw. Puts him in a position. He easily scoops his pot, in my opinion. Check raise then, or as Ooh. it goes, check, check actually on the flop. You think Zago's betting out now? I think he should bet. Um, it's a little scary because when you see your opponent check back this flop, you put him on ace king a lot and you're like, oh, would they fold? I personally would love to see a bet if you call him king eight suited out of position. Sometimes what happens is you bet here and then you fold and then, okay, it doesn't matter. Nice. It's an eight on the river. He probably looks at this and he's like, hmm, there's a very good chance that my eight is good. I'm trying to think, should he value bet here? I think with his style, he should. He's going to get, he should get looked up more. I assume he's kind of crazy a little bit. Uh, a lot of times you're up against ace kings. Sizing's pretty good. You don't want, if, if you're trying to get ace king to call, you can't bet too big. Or Pikachu. I like that uh, Pikachu has like kind of a sad face, you know, it's like the instant I have to fold face. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, well done there by the Zagos. I do think his ace jack three bets good. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see it's definitely playing. I'm, but he seems quite a bit checky to me. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, I know, like, even though he didn't, he, if he bet the flop, he might have still, he probably would have lost his hand anyways, but. Just given how he's played so far, there's, he's getting involved, but post off he's like, all right, breaks. He's already I got his foot on the break as he plays. This is exactly the hand where I expected you raise our fold to put some chips in the middle. Oh, you, you know, win. Because Constas is super aggressive, and eventually there's going to be a small blind, big, uh, big blind scenario there. Yeah, you got me. But his, his name is wrong. It should be you raise I call now. Ooh, that's a that's funny turn. Three bases on the board now. I mean, this is one of the, these moments where you look at your king high and like, that's that's a pretty good card right now. I've actually got a decent hand. Yeah, he does. Ionis here is thinking, but it's unlikely his opponent has an ace because obviously all the aces are out there. Maybe he fires one more, puts his opponent on like a flush draw type hand, some queen eyes and king eyes. I don't want to continue in this big spot. And he's going wow. for it. Two thirds pot. That is actually a sick bet. Yeah. This is one of these moments where I really, I can feel that you raise our fold feels that he is ahead, that he's got the best hand here. But it's such a gnarly spot because he's been tight as well so far, right? And you don't want to come home and your friends ask, how did you do it at the big final table? And you're like, oh, I lost with King five, small blind against big blind, lost all the chips. Told my opponent that nothing. Oh, what did you have? I was like, well, King high, but there were three aces. <laughs> You don't want to go out like that, Nananoko, but I know that he knows that he's nice got the best and he makes the call. Does not improve on the river, but he does still have king high and he's basically playing king 10 high. Brilliant call there. Like really, like the guy bets two thirds. He really bet an ace on that turn? I don't think so. Um, I, I like the one hand he plays. He's playing it really well, but it's not over yet. Ionis is thinking, this guy time bank called the turn. Sure, it looks like an ace to me. I'd be very scared if I'm uh, Constance to, to fire one more, honestly. Yeah, he's out. He thinks this guy's got an ace. Yep. Now, your raise, I fault, can obviously just check back. He could also bet if he feels like he needs to bet. But I would look at this board and be like, I think my hand is good. He could be a little bit worried about a three, right? It is fair. Uh, to be I actually closer. think he's worried about the flush a little bit, like because his opponent could maybe bet the turn of a flush draw, just trying to make some play. I kind of, I kind of wish he just jams here. To be honest, I feel like he's never behind. If the guy's betting an ace on the turn, he's betting the river. So the fact that he bets big on the turn and checks seems like he's always giving up. Um. Even his opponent has a 10, it'll be a very hard call to make. Like, I know he's he's going to go for it. I like that play a lot. 
<laughs> well done, you raise I fold. It took us a little while before we saw him play his first hand, but he played the hand well. Constas is clearly a very fun play, and I know Kony makes sure that we have something to talk about, but he might have to have to tighten up a little bit, right? Because he's he's getting a bit crazy now. In that hand, it's almost disrespectful to his opponent. He's just like, you know, you're a one K player or something. You're like, I'm gonna make a play. And he got he got kind of owned there, right? Like got called like twice by King High. Um, I think this would be a fold. But Zagos is a little crazy, so I'm not, I can't yeah. say this is. He should be folding, but he might call. Um, wow, that awesome. hand last hand was great though. Now, awesome hands, very well played by you, Ray. I fold. I actually would have. Like, I know that you like the gem, but what I would have really liked is just a check because he had the feeling that the king was good. And I think what... that if the flush didn't get there, he 100% would check the king high. But he's trying to, if a, a flush is never going to call you on this board, especially the way the action is, um, mm -hmm. I think he guarantees he wins the pot. Like, he wins normally because King High is good, but he also wins against these hands that accidentally make a hand and just has to fold. Um, but if a heart didn't roll off, I think he 100% would check that river card. Like say it was a 10 of offsuit. Well, very well played. You don't have to play a lot of hands to win a lot of chips and you raise our fold. Well, he now has more chips than he started at the final table with. Oh, poor Victor Ustimov that he behaves here. Zagos put in a little uh, bet. Oh, he's definitely going to raise to like 1.2 million. I'm just wondering if Victor is going to limp call this Queen Eight of Hearts. Uh, because, you know, I, like I said, I, I recall him being a little snug, but, you know, he is going to go for it. Should have folded. Look at that flop. It's a very <laughs> bad flop for him. It's a great flop for Zagos. Top air and a Queen High flush draw. Not much more you could really wish for. <laughs> hey, fever season, Nanonoko. It's been kicking my ass. It's winter for you, right? Oh, Thomas Mulaka has got a set. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. OP is going to open. Let's see. Pocket sixes. He saw, he knows his opponent's got a six, so he's out. We Thomas can see Mulaka it. watches the show and he's wondering, <laughs> how should I play my set? Do I three bet? Do I just call? And I think Thomas is going to call here and let his opponent hang himself. That set is coming, guys, on, on the turn or river. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, I can't believe you. Are you next year or I don't know, next season, like episode 53, are you going mm. to keep spamming your pocket fours? Because it's just not true. Simply. No, lately it really hasn't been true. I, I kid you not. Like the first months I was playing on GG Poker, fourth non stop sets over and over and over again. Pocket fives have kind of become the new. You know how orange is the new black? Pocket fives are the new pocket fours. <laughs> the pocket fives make a lot of sets. But uh, I'll keep you posted, Nanonoko. I wonder if Thomas Muller can rabbit hunted though, just to see if there was a four on the Turner River. <laughs> I hundred percent he did. Everyone who ever hunts the pocket pairs, right? Just in case. Zagod has a uh, pocket jacks. He's gonna open things up from the button. Kind of funny how the small blind and the big blind both have the same hand. Like, given what I've seen so far, I feel like Zagos is like the scariest player at this final table, right? Like, I feel like he's just he's gonna put some pressure on. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, if I had, a, if I could re-choose my seat today at this final yeah. table, I would make sure I have position on this guy, or at least not be out of position. I gotta say, if I would have known that he plays like this, I also wouldn't have mind putting some chips on him. Like on one end, it's very risky because you know that he can go out early. Oh, that's a spicy turn card. <laughs> Open yeah. ended now for Pikachu. With these two hands, though, I expect some passive play. Both trying to get to showdown. It would be a funny card, but it's unlikely, of course. No six, no jack. LP Pikachu may think, he's like, is, there, is there a world where I have a good hand here? The answer is no. Let's see if he decides to make a play for it. It probably will work against the hand he's up against. He does have reasonable showdown value. Still beats mm. all those Broadway hands that is an ace. 
So I, I think check is the still a good option. And Ace could easily check that wow. turn. But he's going for it. That's this guy's OP. He's a good player. But Jax is not done yet. Can Zagos find a call here with the Jax? He does have Dude. the Jack of Diamonds. He obviously blocks, you know, the Jack Tricks. Eights. Yeah. Yep. But that he can't call that. That'd be sick if he did. Great play. Wow, OP is so good. Not sure if a seven big blind bet gets it done on the river. Nananoko, these nerds are giving us a lot more action than sometimes we see in the first hour of the 10Ks, mate. So from what I've seen so far, Zagos definitely knows what he's doing. OP definitely knows what he's doing. Um, God of MTT seems reasonable too. Like Ryu Rei's I fold plays pretty like he only played one hand, but he played that hand amazingly. The only guy who's kind of just kind of giving me these like this is a big final table for me vibes is that bankrupt you down there. He hasn't yeah. played a hand. Oh, he did just all in a screen against the open of Zaga. Oh. So. Okay, okay. Whatever okay. it was. But yeah, I mean, he's chilling. You can't blame the guy. He's got, what is it, like 16, 17 bigs, something among those lines, 18 maybe. No rush. He's like, I'm fine here. You guys keep battling it out with each other. You guys keep making all the cool moves. Commentators will forget about me. And he just looks on the left side and he looks at those pay jumps and he's like, all right, let's make this a 50k day, shall we? Okay, here we go. Big stack. This this was the once upon a time first versus number two in chips. Nothing, nothing. I would like to see God of MTT keep the pedal to the metal. Um, it's hard for your opponent to play back on the queen, queen seven. Especially when they got less chips in you. That seven of diamonds is kind of your dream card, right? You're like, <laughs> yeah. that gives me all the options. What if, what if the, oh, he makes a race. A min, wow. A min race. Is it min race or is it a little bit more? It's a little bit more. 100K more. Wow. What is happening? This, he's, he's in for it, isn't he? His name Can? before he got the real name was Bluff Me Not. Well, <laughs> wow. he's living up to that name. God of MDT is not out yet. He is out of the hand. Sick play. Don't need to raise anything, do you? Very well done. Things not really working out yet for our Russian God of MTT, but he is still the chip leader of this final table. But it does suck. Like now you are looking at your stack. You're like, man. It's been uh, 42 minutes and I've lost uh, 7 million chips. Like, that just doesn't feel good. Even if you're still technically first, you hate to see it. You know, Ionis and, and Zagos, man, they really firing away. I, I like it. Like, mm -hmm. we don't, we do not have one of those nitty final tables. I'll tell you that. Let's see if Bank Rob Jew wants to toss in one big blind with his suited king. I feel like earlier he did not want to. I think he folded a king eight of diamonds. This time he does, which is kind of funny because this was even an under a gun opening. It's like a worse hand too. He's yeah. like, yeah, but bankrupt you is like, you know, these commentators say I don't play a hand. I'm going to play a hand and now I'm bleeding faster. I'm going back to folding after this. Maybe he went to that uh, school of logic that you tried to teach here where hearts are awesome and everybody loves hearts, but diamonds is everyone's least favorite or clubs, whatever it was. Clubs is the least favorite, then diamonds. Oops. Then we go hearts and that's 100% true. Like, I can't believe I might have to make a poll on this. I'm like, my God. No, you don't have to make a poll on it. But with a four color deck, my bankrupt you just folded the pocket eights there. So Zango's actually taking this one down with his raise of pocket fives under the gun. Oh, the god of MTT has queens and Zagos has ace queen. And with the way that he's been playing so far, Nanoko, I think a lot of chips are going to go to the center. Or you think this is going to be race all in fold? <laughs> it's not going to be all in <laughs> ace queen. He's going to sit on 50 something bigs. No, but I mean, he will all in and queens will uh, gem. Like, I don't think ace queen uh -oh. obviously will gem. Yeah, but I, I think the call definitely is standard from the big blind with these stacks. Um, Three betting just makes it funny. He's not going to fold this flop, though. Ace Queen still could be the best hand. Mm. 
Well, Zagos is uh, making things a little harder himself. God of Empathy obviously is hoping to finally take one down, but there are now 3 million ships in the middle, so this is becoming a serious spot. It is always a little scary when your opponent is calling you from the big blind and there is a, a paired board, but he's not slowing down. Yeah, I like that he keeps firing. You know, there are some bad river cards. I think fire, turn, check back river seems pretty good. By checking turn, you kind of make things funny, give your opponent a chance to catch up. He takes one down. So you think it's super standard for the ace queen not to raise there? Yeah, with these stack sizes. And I think you've seen it too in our super millions. Like everyone with these big stacks are always afraid to clash. Mm -hmm. um, you keep your you keep up dominated hands in too. What's up? I love that. You look around the table, you're like, oh, a couple of decent hands. And then Constas is like, all right, let me open things up with my Jack Eight of Hearts. I'm like, okay, middle position. The man likes to party. Ace Jack. It's pretty much one of the best hands of three bet, I think. That's kind of like not premium. Um, good blockers. Not strong enough to flat. Seems too weak to fold. Unfortunately, it's not going to work, but I like the play. The ace jacks have been three betting correctly, just haven't been winning. Mm -hmm. Victor Rusimov has ace king offsuit on the button. Let's see how he decides to play his ace king. Almost feels like all in is the only thing the you only can play. really do, or could you make it? Yeah. Nah. When you get dealt this hand, all the other buttons just get grayed out. Like you can't actually click them. There's only an all-in button. And all in it is. You raise I fold is like, damn it, why do I listen to all these guys that are apparently so good at poker to tell me to three bet ace joke? I didn't even want to three bet ace joke to begin with. <laughs> well, he's played two hands. One played great. This one he played I think he played he it played fine. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks credible too. Like you got an eight percent V pip. They're gonna think you got a big hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes you play fine and there is nothing you can do. <laughs> this oh, has yes, been a very you. adventurous first hour. We've got nine more minutes of poker till the first break, and I can't believe the amount of moves and the amount of action we've seen already. Look, I'm sure some of these guys in are watching our our stream. Maybe with the sound on. Please keep the Dan Bilzerian emotes up because I haven't seen them all. And I'm, I'm I'm loving it every time I see it. Very well I've, done too. I've seen them all. I've spammed them all, especially the <laughs> WTF. <laughs> and every the now and then, the you the suck. No, the one of I like running hold of Dan Bilzerian because it looks like his beard is on fire. <laughs> As if, I feel like Dan Bilzerian's you suck is the most appropriate, like the most appropriate person to put you suck out there. Now, Alki's you suck is actually the best one because it's like. He makes like this little face and he keeps moving. It's actually really funny. <laughs> the funny thing is Elky would never say you suck to anyone. I That's know. the thing. Uh, he's too nice. Thomas Mulecker has a screen here. Flopped a second pair. He's uh, keeping the pot small. Controlling the situation. Oh, PC's two checks. He might be tempted to bet. It won't work though. I'd be shocked to see Mulecker fold here. Nah, he's never folding this. Um, his opponent took the bait. Does, thinks his opponent has like an ace seven type hand, you know, something that doesn't want to bet. But eventually ends up betting. Well, Mulecker, he's a genius. Makes the call, Jack. Is he dull? Oh, that's is a straight. he dull? That is a straight net and no call. OP Pikachu makes the straights. Obviously not the nut straight, but it is still very good on this rainbow board. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. OP. I get vibes that he should bet big. This guy could... Millocker can show up with Queen Jack. Um, you know, something like this. Decent amount. Mm-hmm. At least 1.5 million. Pot size Maybe. bet. Yeah, pot size. I like it. Thomas Murky is like, really, mate? It feels like you had nothing. Then it feels like you just tried to steal the pot. And now you bet wow. big. Thomas Mulecker makes the call with ace queen and receives the bad news that Pikachu found a four outer on the river. 
to give him the winning hand. Pikachu is off flying and we've got a new chip leader and it's OP Pikachu. After less than one hour of play, the man that nobody believed in. And I said it was wrong, Nanonoko. In this pre-show, I said it was wrong because this dude is not bad. He is our new chip leader, my goodness. Gosh, Roddy, you definitely should have broke your rule and put some bets on today. Like, because you had insider info on these guys out there that I have known nothing about. This guy's just OP. Look at this two using the new chips. King Queen, three bet in it. Great he's play. Good. He's a good player. No, he's not just he's good in this hand. He's a good player. I, I Hands know. down. I, I told you. I mean, it, this guy got the best of me, Nanonoko, and that says something, okay? Every time I play... Doesn't, that doesn't mean anything, That Roger. says everything to... now. I'm memeing, of course. I'm joking. <laughs> but I've had him on my table quite a few times in, like, the 315 Bounty King and stuff. And he's very memorable because of his Pikachu avatar. And I'm like, can you stop tree betting me all the time? You know, like, every single time I even felt, you know, you judge yourself in, in the middle of a hand. You're like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that because now if he does X, I'm kind of cocked. And then, of course, he always does X. I'm like, God, this Pikachu guy is so annoying. Let's see what happens here, though, as Constas decides to defend his big blind and flop stop her. Yeah. Oh, I mean, look, OP Pikachu. Now you know he doesn't three bet only premium. So, like, next time he three bets, you're like, I know, okay, I'm going to fight I can back. Make some plays. I'm going to jump. But I've done that with God of MTT because I know that he always three bets me. And then I had, like, one of these hands has. Uh, and we'll talk about it later because this pot is getting bigger and Pikachu does pick up a pair of fours now. Yeah. You know, but God of NCT hasn't three bet bluff yet. So just keep that in mind. That's why he always shows up with it. But OP picks up a pair, ace on the river. Um, I'd imagine OP doesn't think his hand is good. Mm -hmm. Just does he think his opponent will fold? I feel like his opponent has played the hand like he's got a 10 or an 8, right? Without a yeah. very strong kicker. So it basically becomes a kind of a leveling game. Like, you know I got this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, just snap checks, just hoping he's up against King Deuce or something. <laughs> That's not the case. So Consas wins back a couple chips that he has lost so far. Well, yeah, I guess you are right. So far, we haven't seen God of MT make too many wild three bets yet. Pikachu, absolutely. Like that guy, he's gonna get no credit from me anymore. It's like I know that you do this with garbage, mate. <laughs> now he's he's playing good. Um, really liking. He's also he seems he's very solid, right? Because mm -hmm. he's not crazy, but he makes his picks up his plays. And, like guys like Zagos and Costas, they're kind of crazy a little bit, you know? They're they're not so solid. Zagos just seems very aggressive to me, and Constas just kind of seems like a very good, but definitely a degen kind of poker player. Like, he knows what he's <laughs> doing, but this man is willing to gamble. He's willing to take a lot of risk. Zagos is just aggressive, I think. He's an action junkie. That's what it is. Like, <laughs> he, wants, he wants to get in there, flats a queen jack suited, flops a flush draw. He's loving life. Is he going to check call, check raise? Check raise doesn't... It's the hand seems fine on this board, but the thing is, it doesn't make sense to check raise because, like, what are you check raising on this flop? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, ace eight. Yeah, but <laughs> and then, like they just always know you up to no good. Uh, OP on the turn doesn't have anything. It's a good hand on this board, but it's not the best hand. Mm -hmm. Say six queen jack should feel very good. Should feel good. Yeah. But then you, you board, probably bet, but... bet small to target the ace high calls. I think so. Because I, I was thinking, well, can you, what about like the over pairs? The thing is, over pairs, I expect them to bet the turn a lot on this run out. So I think oftentimes this opponent actually has an ace high or like an eight, nine, eight, seven sometimes. So I do like a smaller bet. Those were a slightly bigger bet. It's like 60, 70% pot, around 60 maybe. Mm. It's tricky for Pikachu. Yeah. He's like, well. Good fault. Nah, he's, he's solid. Good fault. Well done. Means we have time for one or two more hands before our first break. Ah, I mean, Consus is completely back in the mix. Look how even those three stacks are on the top right side. Pikachu, God of MTT, and Consus all at 16 million. 
very hard to predict how this is going so far. Look, I think Costa is going to play this Jack Nana Clause. I think um, Costa's had a game plan going before going to his final table. He's like, I'm going to get involved as much as I can. I feel like I can get away with more flat calls because people aren't going to be squeezing. They're going to be trying to get pay jumps because he's been mm -hmm. flat calling a lot and uh, basically trying to outplay all these guys who normally play $200, $300 tournaments. It's, it's going well. Yep. Well, he flops top pair. Obviously, the two hearts on the board is a little annoying. He checks back top pair. God of MT may feel now that his opponent has nothing. Yeah, maybe he throws in a little bit, but God of MT has been checking a lot. I think it's because he's uh, like, if he loses this hand too, he's probably going to get an ice cube in front of his name. And no one wants an ice oh. cube, but he's probably not going to lose the hand as he makes a pair of aces on the river. Obviously, there the flush does complete, but this hand hasn't really been played out like that is a uh, high possibility. Kind of funny how we just check this all the way down, even though one person made top pair and then the other one made top pair on the river. It's us with a so sick, and that is going to do it, guys, for the very first hour of this special Tuesday broadcast. Where we are watching the final table of event number three of the High Roller Week that's currently taking place over at GG Poker. Hopefully, you guys are having fun. We'll see you in four minutes and 40 seconds. Hello everybody, Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings, yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup, it's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal, bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set, very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me, unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
and welcome back everyone to the second hour of this final table coverage of the 1k as you guys can see we had 957 entries for this 1 million guaranteed a lot of things happened in the first hour god of mtt is still our chip leader but he's got 4 million chips less than he started this final table with and it's definitely not a boring final table so far nana yeah it's been delivering for sure and we lost one of our Super millions winners, uh, not winners, but big players out there, Elio Fox. Should have won it, maybe. Should have won it, maybe. We're still going to talk about that, but we still got Mulocker in there. So, you know, he's short too, not too, not looking too hot. Yep. And let's not forget, the only reason we lost Elio Fox is because his aces got cracked. I mean, he did everything right. Went pre-flop all in with aces, lost to queens. Yeah, Victor Ustamov, he's the one that did that damn. I'm telling you, this guy was like really simple playing like last time like right now he's got he's sitting on like a ton of chips and he's played that that big hand pretty much op pikachu has pocket sixes god of mtv has ace king offsuit he folds the sixes outright good decision because he was going to face a lot of resistance let's see what constas decides to do with his pocket sevens he's been flat calling or he's been flatting a lot let's see if he calls one more time is yeah smooth the smoothest of calls there we go zagos likes to play and he's gonna tag along mm -hmm. with his jack eight of spades and flops a whole bit of everything but has nothing yet i mean that's the the, the most beautiful hand of these three on this board mm -hmm. checks their round Funny that the sevens are best at this point, but it really doesn't feel like it. It feels like, <laughs> there we go. Jack eight makes this straight. And things look quite dire for the other two. Keeps checking. These guys are check mode eh, today, eh? I would have bet that Jack eight suited for sure. <laughs> like, they seem worried. So you check in here just hoping someone's got like pocket nines, 10 nine or something. Now you got to bet. I think, yeah, you got to bet. I bet big. Board pairs on the river. And let's see what the man with the straight decides to do. Like 1.8 million big, something like that. I think I bet bigger. I feel like no one, the queen is unlikely given how it's been played. Yeah, he's going, he's basically just trying to get paid off the maximum against like an ace 10 jack. 10, like these types of hands. Kind of sad when you just come along on the big blind and you flop and you're like, there's a lot of potential. Then you turn basically the nuts, the second nuts, feel really good about it. And it's just like, check, 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 bad, fold, fold. And I'm like, well, a bit underwhelming. 10's an ace queen here, could be another big one. Smoothest of calls. King nine suited here. He's gonna probably come along too. Mm -hmm. Unless he's got more evil plans than that, but he doesn't. He's gonna make the call. Ace queen takes the lead though with that ace of diamonds on the flop. I find it so hard to predict who's gonna win this right now, even after an hour. It, it look at those like stack it's... sizes man four guys five guys with the same stack practically right it's so wide open i've got a good feeling about pikachu because i feel like he's been flying and i think he just plays well moonocker makes the call here with the king nine middle pair since he is yeah. kind of short then and i'm a little bit surprised by that yeah my guy's not here to win it today i mean he's playing to win it but he's not gonna win it my guy's getting crushed Roddy, he's putting in chips behind every single time. Oh, um, yeah, it's a bit, I think this, he's like, oh, well, I've seen Costas bet kind of small lot, so maybe I've got the best hand, but a little bit ambitious. Mm -hmm. The check on the turn is gonna give him a good feeling that maybe he did make some sort of an insane call and his opponent is holding two diamonds, but you know, which diamonds check. would he be holding? It's a super sick check, cause like, I think he thinks that the diamonds would have just said, <laughs> this is block bet, min bet. Of course, this is going to get jammed on. Now Mulock is going to be like, what a crazy line. Bluff me not was his name before he got under a real ID. 
He's not getting bluffed here. It's funny, his check on the turn has actually given him the mo most value, right? Because whatever he bet on turn, what he got folded. So he at least mm -hmm. got one extra big play. He's playing very tricky because of all the calling pre-flop and then even some of the big hands that he flops. He checks them and then he bets later. It's really hard yeah. to keep track of him. I think his game plan definitely is a post-flop play. And now he's getting jammed on. Mulocker is going to be like, why did you check the turn to now jam the river? Mulocker convincing, convinces himself that his opponent has two diamonds. But which diamonds? Like, which diamonds, Denonoko? Check 10 of diamonds? They, they would slam it in on the turn a lot, right? Yeah. Like, I think he just, I don't know, nice fold, but my gosh, this is brutal for your stack. Yep. Less than 10 big blinds now for Thomas Mulocker. <laughs> has bankrupt you, has aces, and the other dude has been very tight, has ace queen. And of course, Konstas is the one who's going to open things up. With King Seven of Spades, didn't even mention it because normally we don't have to, but with Consas apparently we do. Yeah, bank. this guy hasn't played a barely played a hand. Six percent V pip, aces, flat call, and a call. He's sitting on what eleven and a half big. This is a dream scenario, and he still has four ten. people behind him. He's sitting on exactly ten big blinds, Nana Noko. Ten oh, times. <laughs> <laughs> There's no I need to make this, this complicated. Still think this is a call. You don't like to see it because your opponent's been playing so tight, but like, how can you ever fold this? And you got to overlay in the pot, a huge overlay. Mm -hmm. He's probably mostly worried about ace king, but he makes the call and receives the news that it's not ace king, but it's aces. Needs to find a lot of queens. That's a horrible flop. Three or a five for a sweat. Nope. Nothing. Absolutely there nothing there. <laughs> Bankrupt, you chips up to 8.6 million. Means that Thomas Mulocker is now pretty much the only real short stack. I'm loving this constant because he's giving me bizarre emojis the whole time. This is <laughs> he's, it for he's... Thomas, by the way. Ace 10. Oh, no. Ace King. Oh, no. My guy and your guy. It's not fair. Nope, this is a slam dunk all in for Thomas Mulocker. Less than 10 big blinds gets folded to you on the button. Ace 10 offsuit. Don't think you need to be a great poker player to realize that this is where you should all in. OP Pikachu may think that he's like, is my ace this good here? Uh, he lets it go. God of MTP will snap call this, of course. And let's see if Thomas Mulocker can find some 10s or if we're going to lose a second player. He needs to King. find kings now. With a jack or a queen, we chop. So jack or a queen, we chop. And king, he wins it. It's going to be an ace, but it looks like a low card. Four or three. That's not good enough for Thomas Mulocker. And that means he... Wow, the two big names, Nananoko. Elio Fox and Thomas Mulocker out in ninth and eighth place. I don't think uh, you were able to predict that. But if you were, I don't think a lot of people would have gone for that. Yeah, two, the, the, arguably the two best players out first. Yeah, maybe, you know what, the $200 tournaments and $500 tournaments are the tougher tournaments all along. I wasn't well, that. I, I wouldn't want to go that far, but they're definitely not <laughs> easy. There's a lot of good poker players in there for sure, like 100%. Victor Ustimov goes for the King-10 suited 3-bet on Bank Drop U. Even though he's got the worst, it may work because we know that Bank Drop U is pretty tight. Well yeah. done. Well done. He's like, this guy just got chips. He doesn't want to put them in. Like, <laughs> instantly. Also, it's like, man, you just had aces. You don't have aces again. And that's the only <laughs> thing you play anyways. <laughs> Did you see? Like, he, he like folded the King Jack suit in next hand. He's like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Tables would have been turned this time. It's Victor Ustimov who had the slightly better hand. You raise high fold, decides to defend the 10 6 of clubs. That man just loves his clubs. Best hand. Yeah, but is it your tournament life kind of best hand, Nanonoko? Well, check, check on the flop. A spade. Kind of tricky because your opponent usually has some outs. Do you bet? Do you check? I don't know, man. This just sucks. Uh, it's so hard. He goes for the check. Maybe that's just the right way to go for it. 
if it's hard and it's so tricky and it's so close, maybe you just check. See what happens. Uh, ace jack probably keeps checking. I actually wouldn't hate a bet here. Wow. Okay. Now the 10 6 feels a little bit better. I actually think a bet wouldn't have been bad here because then it also kind of feels like you could have been playing a monster and just hope that your opponent puts some chips in there. What well, does he should value bet now? This 10 I think as played, he should put his opponent on like a middling type hand, like pocket nines, 8x. So I wouldn't go too big. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. The biggest. One of the biggest. Yeah. Well, you raise I fold, wins a couple chips back after losing them with ace queen versus aces. God of MTT is still our chip leader. Zagos has queens. But the rest of the table doesn't really have a whole lot. I kind of like Zagos. He's someone that, like, after tonight, definitely won't forget the way that he plays. Uh, I think OPH Pikachu. I'm not gonna forget about this guy. Like, okay, yeah, but I already gotta. <laughs> there's gotta be a new after today. What you think there's gonna be OP Charmanders, OP Squirtles? Can't name any more. <laughs> if he wins it all and we can get some legendary clips out of it, then maybe yes. Well, you know Charizard, though, right? Everybody knows Charizard. No, it's Charmander, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the first one, but they evolved, Nananako. And there's a Charmander. <laughs> they get older. And then there is a Charizard, okay? They get older. Unfor unfortunate for Bankrupt Jew is that he uh, flopped top pair when he decided to defend the Queen 9. This Probably guy, when he doesn't play at aces, he loses chips. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he can get away from it. it. Does kind of suck, right? Because you, fl you flop all right, or you flop even good. And why are we defending if we then don't want to fight over the pot? But you start getting a pretty bad feeling about it too, because it's like if you call here, there are more chips in the middle than what you have behind. And it's very <laughs> likely that they come for all of it. Yeah, it's a card too where yeah, I don't really like calling. Mm -hmm. Just the opponent could hit something. Good fault. Feel like everyone is uh, having their creative clock wheels turning in their head where they're like hmm king Go five king, <laughs> king, king five king eight off suit yeah. i actually think that uh consul's got a good spot because the oh uh oh a set versus pocket jacks baby <laughs> well one of the jacks are dead so he's gonna have a trouble resucking out mm-hmm Victor Rusdimov in a lot of oh, never mind. <laughs> in a lot of trouble. No. <laughs> He's gonna be fine, guys. We know that Zagos gets pretty crazy. Let's like if I was Ustimov here, I think I would min race Nanonoko. Just like 2.0, nothing else, not an extra chippy. Right, limp is also all right. Because Zagos does get pretty well. I actually have a good hand. So he decides to just check his Jack 9. Still think I'd bet these two jacks on this flop. Mm -hmm. um, I do agree with that, of course. Like Zagos is like, I want to make a play, but he sees a little bit bigger bet. Six like, still makes a call. Wow, it's nothing. You think that's an annoying card for Uzdimov, or you think it doesn't really matter? I mean, it's annoying because, of course, you could have been overtaken. Um, but he's going to keep firing. But yeah, if he, I think if he got called there, he like just checks the river and hopes for the best. Everyone's got a bunch of garbage this round. Big blind is at 350k. Nobody is super short at this point, though. Obviously, the two shorties are below 20 big blinds, but... And not in immediate danger. And we know that they care about them pay jumps. Yeah, it's a, it could be a little while. Like, mm -hmm. Especially bankrupt you. He's hanging in there. He's like, everything was going so well when I just played aces. Why did I decide to play those other hands? I'm opening uh, 
Ace He's literally down. lost every single time that wasn't aces, it seems. Uh, yeah. yeah. So these two guys, they got shallow, not shallow, short stacks, but everyone else is like the same, really. Like, it's really anyone's game between these guys. But like you said earlier, I do like Ionis's positions. He's he's got position, you know, like the big stacks, and he's he's getting in there. I think I can see his game plan. His game plan is basically open a lot, try to steal some blinds, and and flat call a lot because I think mm -hmm. he thinks his post lop edge is uh, reasonable against these guys. And whether it's true or not, I'm not sure. But uh, that's definitely the approach he's taking. Pocket tens for a bank rob you. Let's see how he decides to play them. Maybe an open to 2.1. Yep. And he's going to take it down. He's like, phew. <laughs> this is where you hit the phew emoji. <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to see any flops here. It's a pre-flop open. You take it down. Phew. It's not even like a jam. Just a two, <laughs> two X rays. You raise I fold, decides to open King Jack suited under the gun. Expecting Konstas to at least defend his big blind here with the Queen Jack offset. Yeah, he has played in the high roller super millions more than uh, any of the other guys that are left combined. Obviously, Thomas yeah. Müller and Elio Fox played a lot, especially Elio played 48 times. But. The other guys have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, be honest, he's my man. My, my, I know Mulocker is out, so like this is my my next favorite player just because he's giving me emojis and he's active. Queen six versus a deuce. Consus doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that likes to give away walks, <laughs> and he doesn't. <laughs> Queen six it is. And you raise a photo like, damn it, I know what's happening here, but there's nothing I can do with a deuce. See, I had a deuce. Like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew he was going to show. Yeah. Uh, he's got some good blinds to pick on when he's on the button, too. Like, mm -hmm. these guys are just going to try to outfold each other a bit. Yep. And then even when it comes to the other guys, like, let's say the two shorties do eventually disappear, then I think... If you look at God of MTT, Pikachu, Zagos, and Uzdimov, I think it's best that Uzdimov is the one who has position on you rather than the other guys, because the other guys are a little more creative and they'd be a little harder to deal with. So even if we get rid of those two, I still like his position. Yeah. Um, I think Zagos is kind of like the scarier one. OP is definitely getting in there a bit more too. God of MTT has been pretty solid. Hasn't been out of line in my opinion so far. Just like throwing some bets out there, but not really going crazy at all. Yeah, this could be a fun one. Ace 10, Ace Queen, King Jack and Ace 8 suited and pocket threes in the big blind. We have Kinda seen like he, he, flat he a lot. didn't mention pocket threes at all. I'm like, this is the, the best hand of the four, right? Everyone's got an ace. Mm -hmm. King Jack folded, I think. So like they can't hit a straight. Three's best hand on a flop, guaranteed. Even four ways, don't you think? No, not guaranteed. But I do think there's a good chance for a set. But I don't think it's the best <laughs> hand. Oh, good, good read. How'd you know? Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to avoid that many, mate. I actually had a sick hand with pocket threes the other day in a uh, 210 turbo bounty. It was like I was super short, like four big blinds. Had a decent bounty on my head. Final table, went all in, had three callers. And I'm like, I was just waiting for the cards to appear on my side, you know, where it's like, all right, I need one of the two trees. And it did it. It did it. And then on the river, I'm like, am I really going to avoid everything? And I would lose to any hard, any seven, any nine, any ace, any queen. And it's like a, a king. I was like, do I win? Or did I just did the pocket threes just hold? Uh oh, ace king suited oh. and aces. Ay, ay, ay. This could oh, be a no. massive one. This could be this is all the chips, I think, potentially. This is lose 15 million chips for Iona's Constance, who's been giving me emojis, Roddy. Oh my god. This is hundred percent all gone. And let's see how Pikachu decides to play his aces. Last time he did this, he had kings. He's upgraded his hand from the big blind three bet. 
got aces. Same guy too, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Makes it 3.4 million. Ponsa has ace king suited. Brutal. Looks like a setup. We're just dropping all the 10K players like this. Like, come on. This, this has to be a jam. Just has to be. Especially if you, you got to give, if your opponent has any game in him, which he does, you got to jam this hand. Yep. There we go. All the chips go to the center. Pikachu, of course, with the snap call. Let's see if we get a scary flop or not. Nope. Well, a heart for a sweat. Nope. Drawing that on the turn, we've got a clear dominant <laughs> chip leader, and it's Pikachu who chips up to almost 30 million chips as Ponsas hits him with the you suck. My goodness, mate. This guy is flying. He's running hot. He's got 30 million. Oh, now we got a real chip leader. So that's, that sucks for Constance because he's playing good and he's got the yep. ultimate cooler there. Um, but by the way, that that you suck emoji is pretty good. You like he when, he's, when you see that one, he actually looks like he's he really means it too. Like he's got that expression. What's the Oki one's a good he like he's kind of kind of over animated. Where you're like, okay, it's not serious, but this one's like you mean it. <laughs> this is kind of funny hand as Pikachu decided to raise it from the small blind. God of MTD decided to defend, and that's a pretty good flop for five dudes of space. Yeah, beautiful. He checks the flop. Man, these guys keep checking though. Let's start firing somewhere. I mean, there's already three million chips in the middle. That's almost bigger than the stacks that they have on the right side. He's gonna keep checking and won't. God of MTT hasn't really been stabbing throughout this final table so far. So I expect him to keep checking. It's a relatively safe run up though. Jack, Jack. <laughs> You're like, good board for deuce five? Like, how often yeah. do you ever say that? Not often, but with the way that this hand has gone out, maybe you're worried about a random four, but if your opponent had anything else, some chips would have probably gone into the middle. So Pikachu will receive the kneels that his deuces are good, and the rich get richer. Closing in on 32 million at this point. Uh, I want to find those people who were like just fired those extra dollars right before final table betting closed. So yeah, I want to have a bet. They definitely were were listening to the pre show because uh, they got some good value and they got extra value, right? Because remember, Mulocker was higher on the poker shares odds or whatever, and he had less chips. I think uh, the sevens are going to send it. No, the sevens will just make the call. And that's the kind of board where you actually kind of think that your sevens are good, no? That's like, all right, I think I like it. Ustimov has been pretty tight. He doesn't open too much garbage. Probably has two Broadway cards, Ace X, whatever. Uh, if he bets small here, I wouldn't hate it if the sevens jam. It's just that we know that he's in a lot of trouble, but normally it'd be a good play. Yeah, for sure. Um exactly this like against this sizing i would jam the sevens in a heartbeat yeah i kind of wish he jam pre-flop but i guess i think he's a little bit worried about usamov who's been kind of tight does make the call turns a five which is not the worst card of the deck nope picks up extra outs he's now gonna need a six or a seven usamov is probably gonna bet real big though and now it makes it even more tempting to call Ay, ay, ay. What yeah. does Constas do with his tournament life on the line? Man, I feel like you're supposed to call here. Like, they've got two spades they jam, they got two clubs they jam. Oh, he does make a great fold, but that was, I think he thinks his opponent's a little tight, so that's why he made it. But good play. Mm -hmm. Still leaves him with less than nine big blinds, though. Could be in hand. If God of MTV opens, I'm almost expecting the A7 officer to jam here. We're playing less than oh cool. yeah, that makes it a bit more complicated does he believe a7 is better than what the god of mtt is jamming here if he makes the call he gets it in tough. great shape it's tough yeah he's in excellent shape but he doesn't know that um he's basically waiting how often his opponent has like an ace deuce in the spot i think it's pretty high but nice to be fair, this is literally the first time that God of MTT has done anything like this all night long, right? 
if yeah, he keeps sure. doing this, if you see him make this play nonstop, I think it becomes a lot more tempting to call with a7. But that's the very first time he's done that. Yeah, well, he's down to three million. This guy, once upon a time, looked like he might have, to, might be under you know contention to take it down. Now he's just trying to hang in there. But a premium situation here, full double mm -hmm. up coming. Look at that, because his opponent's got a king. One of them does. How are they going to hit? Yes, I'm more worried about the clubs. <laughs> I'm a little worried about the clubs. It's hard to make a flush, man. Come on. When's the last time someone hit a flush? Whoa, look at that one. <laughs> yeah, he's the good. only one that doesn't have money. It's chips. Yeah, I spam that yeah. one a lot. Zago seems like he's going to make the call as he hits him with the good luck. <laughs> we got a good luck and a thank you. Constas Boro received the Niels and he's getting it in great. Oh, he gets it in magnificent. And drawing that on the turn. Well done. Okay, Constas is still with us. He's now got more chippies than you raise I fold and bankrupt you. No, they, 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 those are really well done, those emojis. Mm -hmm. I think he's shown me half of them so far. Half more to go, Constance. Just stay in the tournament and keep doing them. It's your, it's the your running cult. What? I don't know if you've seen the Dan Bilzerian running cult, but that one is actually very well animated because they've turned his entire head into an ice cube. So they've even done <laughs> like the cracks of an ice. Yeah, it's very really cool. All right. I don't think Ionis wants to use the running cold. That means he's out of the tournament. <laughs> Well, maybe he could have definitely used it after the ace king into aces, <laughs> but he decided to go for you, suck. Bankrupt you has a hand that he's probably going to play as Pikachu is opening things up on the gun, but he's a chip leader. Seems like a slam dunk all in to me. Obviously, it's scary tournament live on the line. You want to get pay jumps, but these are just spots that you have to go for. Snapfold it is. You love to see that, right? Be like, oh. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, on one hand, you don't mind getting, you want to see you get called maybe by like ace queen or ace jack. That's yeah. probably even better, but it also feels good when the other two guys are so short to just pick up the blinds. Yeah, it's not, it's never a bad thing, really. Um, so Constance is kind of back in there, in my opinion. Zagos, ace four suited. You can tell he's itching to like make a play because he's like, I want to get in there. He's going to smooth flat call here. And he flops well, but look at that. King Queen over there too. This is I think this could be an all-in play from Zagos. Just check raise all in. Hope I got the best hand. Hope you fold like pocket nines. Mm -hmm. But obviously this is kind of for Zagos' tournament life too, because imagine he gives a full double to Constas here, then he's the short stack. So cannot get too reckless. I'm a call he here wouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, his opponent is getting kind of shallow. He is going to go for it. So, coin flip. Constas, is he going to go for all the chips or not? Kind of has to, I guess. No, he's definitely not folding. He just wonders is it better to call and maybe get it on turn. See a safe card. Maybe his opponent's bluffing with some random stuff. But there's no chance he's thinking about folding this hand. Mm -hmm. There we go. All in. Zagos will make the snap call. If he loses this hand, he's down to 4.2 million chips. Needs to find an ace. Okay, now he picks up the extra outs. An ace, four, or a spade. Safe. Uh, that doesn't look very good. Wow. Constas completely back in it, guys. After losing almost all his chips with ace king and against aces, a few hands later, he's back to 15 million. And it's Zagos who's actually our new short stack. Wow, it's funny because Constas was could have busted before those two guys down there. Then now it's Zagos who could potentially bust before those two guys. Constas went from 18 million to 3 million to 15 in like, what, 15 minutes or something? Less than that Ooh. even. Yeah. You raise I fold basically goes for it here with the tents. It's always kind of funny when they go like for the half all in. It's like it's you're betting too much to fold. You know that, right? <laughs> Tens and King Jack could battle it out here. I believe OP. a king got folded. Like OP running too hot. He's gonna win the sand. I don't know how, but he is. Well, he's got the best hand right now, and then maybe yeah. that's how. <laughs> oh. Not really the flop to win, though. No. 
It's also very, very hard for Constas to make that Broadway straight because I believe another 10 got folded. So there is literally one 10 left in the deck. Yeah, true. But he can also hit the Jack or King, right? Or he maybe he bluffs his way to win the spot. It's possible. But he doesn't know those things, Nenanoka. He knows. He's he's a high roller, okay? He's he knows. Mm, let's I... check check on the turn. Constance uh, obviously knows that if he wants to win this one, he's gonna have to bet. He just got all his chips back though. <laughs> yeah, How crazy scared, do we want to get? He he needs to bet because his opponent's gonna have hits a random seven. Oh, he's actually gonna check. Wow. Okay. Thinks nut high card's good enough. Hmm. I'll say this. It's a little bit scary to bet against OP Pikachu and the fact that he does pot control a decent amount with like some good hands. Hey. Oh, look at that. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's the Denver's area and running call. I feel like they made it uh they did a great job with that one. Seven's gonna open up, you raise a fault, is gonna fault and probably show the four. Where he's like, I promise, guys, I really wanna fight back. I just can't. Show me the four. Well, not this time. So which emoji does he have to show me next? It's still got some more to go, Consus. You haven't <laughs> seen Dan Bilzeri in a few yet. <laughs> Is that a good one? I, I love yeah, that's right. a good one. I like the, the classic one. Um, good luck. He doesn't look very, he doesn't look like he mean it though. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah, good luck. Now, all the Dan Bilzeri emotes are like a little evil in a way. <laughs> Jackson A. Sten. Potentially see some fireworks. Maybe God of Empty is the one opening things up first. 10 9 suited. Obviously, a pretty hand. It's going to go for that post flop game. Kind of sucks almost to call here with Ace 10. Because I feel like when, even if you hit the Ace, you're going to be like. Okay. No, what if you hit two aces? Yeah, then you, like... feel, then you, you feel a lot better. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. You feel a lot better with two aces. But in general, there aren't too many great flops when it's like a three-way pot and you're just calling from the big blind. But I think this one qualifies as a pretty good flop. Two jacks here is good a lot, too. He's probably going to put that quarter pot out there. Yeah, even smaller. But once Ustimov check calls here, I think you know where your jacks are. Straight in the trash. Like, check call it a flop. What can he have? Check raise. Wow. This is uh, interesting. I guess he's trying to make his hand look the weakest possible. And mm -hmm. to be fair, that probably would be the right way to look weak. Let's see what Constas decides to do here with his pocket jacks. I think Hans, yeah. Oh wow. my God, you're kidding. You are <laughs> kidding. He makes the call and fills up on the turn. Oh, that's so sick, mate. See, A stand sucks. Nothing about <laughs> Oh, that's unreal. Flop was good. Turn terrible. Wow, he doesn't know it. Does check. He is pot controlling a bit of these strip aces, but man, at least one more bet's going in and Constance is like, He's feeling good. He's probably a lot more worried about a better ace than he is about pocket jacks. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, you don't think about Wait. pocket jacks here. This bet size is perfect. His opponent yeah. like can't fold. He can't hero fold this turn. Oh, that's so sick. Queen on the river. I wonder yeah. if. Constance is like a tiny bit concerned about his opponent having, I mean, ace jack is incredibly unlikely. Ace deuce, pretty unlikely. Ace yeah. queen, pretty unlikely, but. Possible. Ace queen, yeah. definitely possible. It wouldn't be the worst check of all time, but I think he's going to go for all of it. I don't think he goes off. I think he goes like 4 million. I think he hopes for some crying calls. That's the vibe I'm getting because like the truth is if you jam, you're not bluffing very often. They could probably hero fold some like ace seven. Yeah, he's going 4 million exactly roughly. So hope for the ace 10, ace nine, made this check raise crying calls. It's funny how 
Usimov probably felt so good about his hand on the flop. Good wow. fold, man. Really good fold. But yeah, then it's like, what happens on the turn? You're like, what? <laughs> and then the river bed there as well. Then it really does feel like they're just farming you. Good fold by Ustimov. That's a good. I like that one. You're just farming you, like it's <laughs> getting those little bit of chips slowly. You got some good terms already. I like it. Bringing in the the gaming lingo. <laughs> I feel like there's a good crossover between gaming lingo and poker lingo. Oh, oh, I saw your battle is... cruiser, by the way. It was beautiful. I love that you focus on the battle. Wow, look at you raise like four, <laughs> by the way. He's like, you know what, Consos, I know you're crazy. I think King Jack suited could be good here. I love that I post a picture of my carrier statue that I've been waiting for for over a year. And everyone's like, oh, it's so sick, it's so sick. And then you are literally the only person on the internet that's like, nice battle cruiser, Roddy. It's not about the battle cruiser, mate. It's about the carrier, okay? Oh, that's a call. <laughs> It is 100%. a call for Pikachu for sure. Zagos is going to have to find kings and fives. It's a really bad flop. Diamond for a sweat. There's a sweat. Ooh, we're sweating. Zag we're sweating hard. Zagos needs a diamond. Does not get the diamond. And that means that we are down to six. Unfortunately, Zagos was really fun. Played great. Just got a bit unlucky there with the ace four of spades against the king queen offsuit of Konstas. Uh, so we lose him in seventh place. Two guys, there's got we got a pay jump, and it wasn't one of us. Wow, they should high five each other. <laughs> you know? If it's a live game, they for sure like, yeah, nice, nice pay jump we got, huh? They fist bump yeah, they each would look other. At, they look at each other like they're like, we're not gonna high five because that's messed up for the other guy. But you look at the other dude, you're like, short stacks you reunite. <laughs> <laughs> so if we look at the look at the three guys who busted, Elio Fox, Mulocker, and then like the. The the Zagos. Oh, what the was Zagos, that one? Who was Zagos was the guy that was described as a mid stakes grinder, but then played nothing but two Ks and three Ks. <laughs> yeah, a lot of high rollers out there. But there was one I just saw Constance use. It's it, the call bubble was coming out of Dan Bazarian's mouth. What is that one? Is that I, I want, want to call. To, I want to call. I guess yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like uh, Dan Bazarian's My Last Hand because he's the only one who's got chips. Like, oh, yeah. Ace-5 suited. Look at you, raise I fall. I mean, you know, we made some jokes about him being tight, but he just made some plays, man, with King Jack of Diamonds, Ace-5 of Hearts. Well done. Like, oh, he raise I fall to... Oh, yeah, Ace-King, Ace-King, huh? <laughs> sure, he's playing tight, but, like, he... When he plays a hand, he plays him hard, right? Like, I'm still loving that King-5 call down he made and turned into a bluff or whatever, um... But the other guy, he literally isn't playing a hand. Mm -hmm. But he's collecting paychecks. His job is to sit there and collect paychecks. I think Rob Q will think that this is his sweet spot. He's like the two big stacks and duking it out with each other. Extra money for me. Ace King suited versus Ace King offset. Flop for a sweat. No sweats today. How many times are you going to ask for this cold, this sweat on a turn? My God. It's boring if it's already over. You know, like I don't want to see this guy go out with Ace King against Ace King, but I do want to see him clinch his butt a little bit when that extra club rolls off. And you're like, no, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Still feeling Pikachu, mate. I'm feeling Pikachu, feeling real good about Pika. Pika Pika. Hey, you know that much. <laughs> <laughs> you must have played the Pokemon games too, no? When you were younger. Uh, I think I played Blue. I'm going to mm -hmm. go with Blue. Yeah. I, I, I watched the cartoons when I was a kid. So and they the were first good. 100, 100 Poke how many is there? 100 in the first Pokédex? Mm -hmm. 150. Close enough. I got a one in there. In this row. <laughs> All right. This is of limping with King Four offset. Would you like to see a bump? No. Nah. Especially not against Usimov because we already saw him limp with Jax earlier in the show. So mm, true. I'm pretty sure that Pikachu has seen that by now. And then I'd be like, no, we're not doing that.
trying to get Pikachu to bet. Playing it good so far, this King Four. I guess he, I would bet now and just hope my opponent has a six. Just, no. Okay. Yeah, so like if you look at the avatar of Bankrupt You, you also have the feeling that he's actually laying on a beach somewhere and he's drinking a sangria and he's got this laptop and he's just one table laying and he's like, fold, fold. Another one. <laughs> Uno more. Fold, fold. He's, he's living like, a we good just, life. We just got a page up, so let's, let's <laughs> order some more. Next round's on me. It's like a full bar, a full bar of people, you know. One of these bars that's in the water and he's like laying at the pool. I can totally see it because that's how he's playing. I mean, I believe in his profile, like we couldn't post, we had to post like a 300th place in the main event or something for 3K, mm -hmm. right? Like, so, you know, he's got a proper uh, score for his resume next time. Yep. No, this is already, I think, his uh, biggest store guaranteed. Goes for a couple of these guys. Next payout is 40,000. Uh, not bad. 40 times you buy it. Pikachu flops uh, best as he makes a pair of knights and he's got the backdoor spades. I would say the god of MTT has obviously not been running very hot either, right? Hasn't really been smashing the flops, hasn't really been on the right side of his setup. He's kind of doing his thing and I feel like he can't do much more than he's been doing. Maybe he could be a little more aggressive in some... Oh, Ace, King and Jacks between the shorties. I like it. Let's combine one stack. Uh, good luck. He's fight. looking for the good. He's looking for the good luck emoji. He's going for it. Pocket jacks versus ace king. There's the king. You hate to see it with your jacks. There's the ace. He's like, all right, you got two pairs. I just need one. He will not get a jack on the river. That means bankrupt you. And that local pool where he's chilling at from is now exploding as he chips up to twelve million chips. You raise I fold is down to less than five big blinds. Probably gonna go all in here with Jack 10. Next round's on me, Roddy. Mm -hmm. On He's the beach. Get it in bed. <laughs> Queen Jack versus Jack 10. We well, think he ever folds here now, right? I think he folds. Oh. Yeah. Jack 10 is not like the best hand. <laughs> Losing the like queen high, king highs. Yeah, around. but you already have half a big blind in. And you have like no no chips. Because now your next double is going to be even smaller. It's not that much smaller. I definitely would have folded in the big blind. But uh, yeah. Maybe, you know. You never know. Sometimes this guy defends the big blind. They both flop something and he gets coolered out. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> Pikachu is the one. Pikachu does flop better than his opponents. Often when he gets it in with like a similar hand, but then a slightly worse kicker, he still manages to flop best. See if Ustimov decides to chase here or not. I guess we at least want to call once with the open ender, two overs. It does always suck though on a paired board, right? Yeah, but he's not folding this. Um, yeah, I know, but it does yeah. suck. COP. Given the way he plays, usually he checks this spot. Um, his other option would be to just kind of bet and check river. But King high, I think it's good enough to try and show it down. It's not the best showdown hand, but you don't have to risk some chips, and maybe you win the pot occasionally. It's one of these moments where I would feel that maybe you have the same hand as your opponent. It's like, if you have king, queen, I feel like the hands would play out like this. Maybe we chop it up. <laughs> yeah, but if, what I'm thinking is Ustamov also his his game plan is like, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I can't outrace the guy on the bottom. So he's like, two million chips. Let's just play as slow as possible. Pikachu does uh, find another bet here. Maybe hoping to get called by an ace high. Pretty sick bet here, because I feel like a lot of people would just check it and be like, you know, there's four million in the middle. Well done. It's a good read. I think his base, his read is basically like if he had a jack, he would definitely be betting himself now. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I like that bell a lot. Once more, just showing us that this man absolutely knows what he's doing as he breaks the 40 million chip barrier. God of MTT still just hovering around the 15. Not expecting any monster pots, right? With you raise I fold being this short, like no. What that means is Pikachu gonna get some more free cards than normal, right? So in this spot, I think he check calls. You get a lot of free turn cards, I think. In the reverse. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Wow, that's, that's a, such a good that's such a good turn card. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't take the lead, but now any queen, any he's art. always and he's always going to get a free card on this one too. I think like God entities doesn't want to splash to make the pot too big. <laughs> nice There's right the now. queen. Yep, that's really annoying for the God of MTT as well because now he does improve the top two pair. It's obviously not the prettiest top two pair with a four straight out there. But... <laughs> Pikachu is playing well, but he's definitely running well too now, especially in some of these hands where it's like, all right, gets a bit awkward for the other dude. And unfortunately for our Russian comrade, it's just not really quite working out. And it's such an annoying bad tune and a no call. Uh... Yeah, it's like the perfect size too. Yeah. And if he can fold this, it'd be amazing. But the, the tricky part is sometimes your opponent is block betting and mm -hmm. you got like the best type of two pair block bet hand, you know? Like, what if it's my opponent's block betting ace jack here or ace 10? Like, this is, it'd be a terrible fold, right? I think it's a crying call. And you're like, it's a, oh, yeah. I hate it's it. It's a super but... cry. Yeah. It's a deep sigh and then you click that button and you're like, mm hmm. <laughs> Of course. Tap the table. table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's when you look over the other side of the table, it's like, yeah, you play well. Nice river. <laughs> That's, yeah. Nice river. You, you mutter it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you hit him with a so sick. You raise I fold, knows that the big blind is coming, and he's got less than four big blinds as we speak. Queen eight is not a pretty hand, but if he goes all in here, and he does, the rest of the table had absolute garbage. And the god of MT is like, man, <laughs> wow, he just he just took it down pre flop. Then no, no, he did not expect that, and that like is a tough spot too with the queen eight off. I'm not really sure what to do, and it seems like it would have been the right play because like he got queen six next hand. He's like, do I get a better hand? Do I maybe get the big blind? I mean, technically, even if he would lose his big blind and his small blind now, he would be back to what he had before he jammed queen eight. And he's like, well, maybe I get something slightly better than queen eight. And yeah, yeah, ace king, ace five. We had an ace four too. I don't think he's going to defend queen four. It's yeah. Too weak. It's not, not the end of the world, though, because dude's playing like six big blinds. Like, you can't really play it wrong. Um,. I'm not really sure what the optimal play is, but I'm just gonna lay it down. He's like, I got a free round. I might as well just take it and yeah. see what happens. I'm still waiting for the actual all in hand that I'm supposed <laughs> to go all in with. And it's coming. This is very nice for Pikachu, right? Because he's the biggest chip leader, so he can open a lot. And the other guy's obviously yeah. kind of waiting for you raise, I fall to bust. So he's got 32 big blinds to raise king. I think the standard is just three bet all in because the guy's got two million. Otherwise, you would just three bet smaller mm -hmm. um, to induce action. But you don't really want to induce action from like pocket ten or pocket eights or something and, and get it on the bus. I like that. Kunsta showing us that he's not afraid. Pay jumps matter, but you can win some chips. That matters more. Let's see what Ustimov decides to do with Queen Seven. He lets it go. I think for Pika, if it's up to Pikachu right now, it's like you know what? Let's hope that this you raise our fold guy wins the blinds one more time. Oh, this is gonna be it, and they are actually gonna battle. Pocket jacks and Ace Queen suited. Didn't see any aces or queens being folded, but a lot of clubs have been folded. 
So it's going to be hard to make a flush, Nelanoko. I'll give you that one. He's feeling so good. He's like, I got a free round. I got pocket jacks, but I got screwed on this flop. Oh. oh. Wrong that on the turn as an ace queen makes a full house. You Straight. raise our fold is eliminated in sixth place. Nobody cares, Nelanoko. <laughs> and look at Gonsas even rubbing it in at the end of check. <laughs> We're down to five, guys, where Victor Ustimov is actually a short stack. You kind of expect it to be bankrupt you because, you know, uh, which hands did he really play? But yeah, no, it's Ustimov. Got an MTT all of a sudden seems kind of short yeah. sitting on that stack. Mm -hmm. Just hasn't been able to win a hand. And obviously he was forced to make that, or not forced, but you know, lost the extra 1.1 1, 1. 1 million on the river with the ace queen against the king jack of Pikachu. Pikachu is just running away with this uh, tournament. He's got more chips than the rest of the table combined, Nenonoko. Are you sure? That's got to be hard to figure out, no, that's right? Not, like... No, that's not hard at all. It's 28 plus 9 is 37 plus 6 is uh, it's like yeah, 44. See, it, and then you it is hard. Change. No, it it's, is not hard. Hard. Hey, it's, it's hard. not hard. Too many players. 16, okay, 16 plus 16 is 32. Plus 12 is 44. Add some change on top of it. We'll give it 46. He's got 48. Yeah, but it wasn't easy. You couldn't just look at it now. You had to do the maths, right? Like, it's tough. Like, if, if, if OP had 100 million, I can guarantee say that's true. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see. What happened here? Little, little pairs everywhere, eh? One out. Fucking nines be hard to win. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wouldn't mind if Pikachu just bets like 1.2 here. You're probably going to check though. Uh, yeah, I expect him to check 100% actually. It's probably a card where he thinks that he's lost the lead, but check, yeah, check, just hope check. for the best. Uh, yeah. For sure. It's like, I hope you guys don't have it. Bangor of is like, hmm. I want to win this spot. It's probably not going to happen with a pair of eights. But he's going to check this one too. Maybe he was busy ordering a new Sangria. And Pikachu is like, cool. I win this one too. He's got over 50 million chips now, Nananaka. You think that's more than the other four players combined? Yeah, that's a lot easier. But the four in the front was just too tricky for me. Plus, when I see the four, I'm thinking pocket fours always make a set, never makes a set. Like, it's just too many things going on. Well, to be fair, they never play pocket for us, so we just don't know, okay? Okay, so I mean, that's true, right? We, there's a lot of times we could have solved flop, but we never got the opportunity, yeah. to, right? And then they also just give up, like when they don't flop the four. I was, uh, I opened Egyptian stream today, one of the GG squad members, and literally the first hand I see, he's got pocket fours. He gets three bet, he makes a call, and it was like some random board, but all low cards, like seven, nine, three. And then a 10 rolled off. And then he just went for the check raise on the turn. And then Martin Pinero, who's a player from Argentina, plays a lot of tournaments too. So snap folded immediately. And then but where's the four? the four? And there were no fours, but he played the pocket fours like a boss. And I was like, well done, Egyptian. Well done. <laughs> nice play he played, here. He, he played it like he had a set. Yep. Gonzo's taking this one down. What did God of MT fold? Ace. 10, what was it? But like, ace 10. Yeah, ace 10. But Costas put it like a really tiny three bet, like four and a half big blinds or something. Could this be an all in and a call? Could be. Could also, it's 100% all in call. Wow. God of MTT can knock out this Ustamov. He can hold his ace king. Yeah, but God of MT has been running too hot though, so I'm sure that he's worried. So far, so good. Needs to avoid Safe. a queen or a 10. GG no Ustamov, eh? Uh, that could be a 10, mate. It's a 9 or a 10. I'll tell you that much. Oh, oh my oh, god, god, it's a 10. Oh, you did it again, Nana. No, no, <laughs> Why would you do God of MTT so dirty, mate? Because he's your pick. <laughs> that, that's why. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for the guy who came in as a chip leader as ace, queen, and 10s could battle here. Wow. Chip leader down to short stack. 
Constance mm-hmm. going to get it in with bankrupt you probably. You know, I actually feel like this is just even better for Pikachu, right? Because now the other guys will all look at each other and they're all going to like try to outlast each other and he can just keep getting richer. Like it's almost better than getting that guaranteed pay jump that he's going to get anyway with 50 million chips. Very possible. Hmm. I think it's good for him. This is our last hand, by the way, before the break. Well, this hour flew by. It's been a very entertaining. I actually kind of like casting Ooh. a 1K. It's very different. A Pikachu flops a bit of everything. A 10 of clubs on the turn would be insane. Wow, they just all... Well, Consus already that much. In, already insane board for these mm-hmm. hands. Like, he's clean. Mate, it's actually... Like, if Pikachu all ins here, you think... Nah, he will never fall. Yeah, he'll never fall, but I don't know if Pikachu will all in. He's still got a th- like a 16 million stack out there. Like he's not like looking to get in all of these chips again with this hand. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Extra outs. <laughs> yeah. Any man. jack, any nine, any ten, any club. I think the play here basically is just jam and hope for the best. Yep. Board's getting too crazy. You got a pot size bet. Close your eyes. And OP's Final hand be before the in. break. Yeah. Don't forget that. You know that too. He checks. Oh, oh wow. Free card hmm. for OP, in my opinion. Oh, I don't know why you checked that. I think he's actually worried. Yeah, of course. Oh. He's worried about pocket fours. Ay, ay, ay. Does go check check on the turret and Pikachu makes the jack high flush on the river. You know what I find annoying, by the way? I love literally everything about the GG Poker client, but if you would right now click on your hand, it would tell you that you have a queen high flush because, you know, there's a queen on the board. But I feel like that's irrelevant information and it should only tell you where your flush starts you know what i mean so this is when you, you come in with this information and a big hand oh my god roddy is the break next hand you say right thank god yeah, i need yeah. that soon you, you've got five minutes to go over that and let that sink I'm in tr- <laughs> triggered <laughs> pikachu puts a bankrupt you all in and this is just a very very gnarly spot especially because god of mtt is so short too i'll tell you nananoko i would not know what to do here feels like a mandatory call i don't know man like as played two clubs bets a turn a good amount too man but bankrupt you man he, he knows how to hang in there and survive so if there's one guy to fold is this guy at this final table mm-hmm. I mean, this is tough the six oh. he'd be left with 12 big blinds and you can obviously say that all that he's got is top pair top kicker but it is also the chip leader who's making this move on you. I mean, he basically loses to a flush. Wow. And all the while, good fold. Saved. Good fold, but yeah, maybe it could have played a hand a bit different before that. That does mean it's time for our second break. We are left with five players here at the third event of the High Roller Week over at GG Poker. 1K event, we had 957 entries. And in the next hour, we'll probably figure out who's going to win it. Hello everybody, Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set, the middle set on the flop. 
It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future, so keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back guys to this coverage of the 1K final table of the High Roller Week. This is event number three. We are down to five players where OP Pikachu, nobody believed in him when it came to the final table betting. When we started our show, there was a literally $6 put on him. Well, in the last 10 minutes, a couple of people decided to fire some money at him. The final bets were a little over $1,000, I believe, or exactly $1,000. And now he is our dominant chip leader. Bankrupt you and God of MTT are super short. Consus is hanging there. Ustimov is hanging there. But it's all about Pika Pika so far. Pika Pika. Ooh, you think oh, he man. calls? You think I, I think I would call. I, I think I would call you. I wouldn't love it because you know God of MTT is short, but they do this so often and no good. They do this with so much garbage. He makes the correct call. Well done by Bankrupt you. Love the call. Let's see if there is justice in this world. So far, there is. There still is. No 10, and he gets the full double, and that's not a 10 as it's paint. Well done by Bankrupt You. Not an easy call, but the other short stack, obviously being as short as he is, but a correct one. Love it. Bad news for Contest, and I think great news for OP Pikachu, because this dynamic just stays, and he can just keep picking up more blinds. Oh, if he <laughs> all ins here, then he's out, Ooh. though. But he shouldn't all in, of course. It's a bit too much. Hmm. What is the right way to play this? Naked one? Okay. He just all in with the A screen. 
And Van Grobu does not decide to risk it with ace four, which obviously is the correct decision. Well done. I like that call a lot with ace five. Yeah, for sure. Um, cause this, I know the other guy has the same stack, but you know, he, it, it could be a missed opportunity if you don't make that call there. Mm -hmm. The God of MTT is going to go all in with the ace four and he's going to get it through. So he picks up a couple extra chippies. I just think this is so nice for OP Pikachu. Everyone is so short and he's got a million chips. This time it's going to be ace king. The God of MT2 has a suited ace on his big blind. It's a very weak suited ace. I guess Costas is thinking, does he ever just jam here? That's mm -hmm. why he's taking his time. Yeah. I think he wants to cut out the, the big blind from defending with uh, that kind of stack size. Doesn't want to, you know get him to defend like 10-9 suited and it comes numbered board or whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's see if Pikachu decides to get adventurous with his King-8 offsuit here from the button. The answer is yes. I uh, I think he has played a marvelous final table. Obviously ran good in a couple of the big spots, was on the right end of a setup or two, but I think he's been playing very, very well. Backdrop, you has aces, and if it gets folded to Comstas, Pikachu might save Constas here because I think if it gets folded to this. Oh, whoa, 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 oh, wow. whoa. Well, there we go. Ace 5 is going to get called by Aces. Let's see if Pikachu can find a deuce 3 4. Nope, he needs a 5 and a 5 only. <laughs> can he find a 5 or will it be Bank Dropped You? It will be Bank Dropped You who gets the full double. 23 million. That's how you've... That's my dad's favorite poker player right there, mate. Just, dude, he's just, been shit. Uh, just my dad wouldn't have made the call with ace five but everything else this man is crushing i can't believe this guy's sitting in second place with 23 million like he's mm -hmm. got full doubles of aces every single time he made a great photo of ace queen you gotta give him that one right like wow sick yeah he came in with five million chips too at this point, the guy who came in sixth and the guy who came in eighth have all the chips. <laughs> Hard to predict. That's what I told you as well with our final table betting segment. Sure, there were a couple big names, but I think this was just a very tough to predict final table. And the fact that the guys who came in sixth and eighth place are the ones with all the chips now, just kind of proves it. OP, he's been jamming. Is he going to jam Jack 9? He's going to be a pretty big, pretty big jam. But he is. He wants his chippies back. He's like, I had 53 million. <laughs> I know what I want, and I want it now. King I don't think he can jam this, right? Because this guy's got 23 million now in the big blind. He's kind of yeah. like, yeah, okay, I'll just raise. What if he's got aces again? Snap fold. So like, okay, bankrupt you is like, I've got such a big cushion, I can fold with anything now. Mm -hmm. He's ordering a new round of shots for everyone. <laughs> well, it's too damn cold in Canada, chilling in the Bahamas. Sometimes it's like, you look at 4-3, you're like, suited connectors, and then the flop comes and it's like, Ace Jack eight, and you're like, why the hell am I playing four three suited? Well, I mean, he was looking. He's like, I should probably play this. Then he looks at the other stacks at the other tables. Like, no way, I'm in third place. There's no way in hell you're getting any chips out of me. Who is uh, who is that on Constas's avatar? Do you know? Just looks like one of those old sitcom TV sitcoms. Sitcoms, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I don't I'm know this one. It. Mm -hmm. I was thinking too. God of MTT does have an awesome avatar, doesn't he? A little flying out key. It's pretty good. <laughs> Is that the you make the final table emoji or whatever thing? Still can't tell you, mate. The other day I was finally, <laughs> mate, I kid you not. I was playing a, like one of these late 105 Turbo Bells and I actually had like an amazing run and was going really well. And it was at one point with 10 players left. Oh, Ooh, wait, Ace wait. King and Dance. We're going to battle. 
We are gonna battle. Save that story. Right, so God of MTT could be potentially out. This dude was chip leader. Five left. I mean, he's got more chips now than he had three hands ago, so I don't know why he came to that conclusion at this point, but <laughs> here we go, guys. Pocket tens and Ace King. Maybe Pocket tens can make a set. What about that? Or they can just hold. They are still holding. Victor Ustimov needs an ace or a king, or he will be the shortest stack. And wow, the fact that it was pain must have been a bit scary. But God of MTT is back to the stack that he had for a long time. That is the 15 million. <laughs> yeah, the other day, I wasn't streaming, but I went to my Discord. I'm like, guys, I'm finally going to make final table. This was like 300 and something entries. One of five turbo. I'm like, I'm a third out of 11, but obviously it's a turbo, so everyone's short. And I could, didn't get anything. I didn't get anything, but I'm like, it's okay. So Usimov wanted to flop something good and go for it, but flops are really nothing. So you can't do much here. Story, and continue. I kid you not, Nenonoko. Like at one point, I'm like eight out of 10, okay? And there is like a three way all in, and it just plays out like this that everyone stays alive. Another all in at the other table, everyone stays alive. Another one all in. And then in the end, I jammed ace five from the small blind. Uh, when I was 9 out of 10, and the big blind just snap calls me with ace king, and I'm like, what the hell? It was like 7 or 8 all-ins in a row that would have finally given me my Alki dance, and the short stack kept winning. I was so pissed. Here's a call coming up, I believe. So small. 1.6 extra to play for 4.8. Wow, ah, he folds. folds. This is a keep, keep the short stack alive thing, basically. Yeah. This is actually really tilting for Ustimov. He's like, are you kidding me, man? You would never <laughs> fold. I could jam anything, you'd never fold. And I get queens and you fold? I think he jams here? Maybe. It's not a bad play, for sure. Yeah, it's a pretty good play. It's, like his, if even if his opponent's sitting on ace 10, ace jack, I don't think he calls. He shouldn't call it either. It'd be a pretty much disastrous suicide. <coughs> The God of MT is going to look at that one back in the VOD and he's going to be like, oh, you are so lucky. <laughs> God, City on King 10, okay? He wasn't going to call anyways, but... Uh... I know, but he, you saw it took a few seconds longer than the snap fold this day. Lines go up again. Consta so... is the one. This guy, God of MTT and Ionis, they went all the way down to like 3 million chips and then like went all the way back up to 15 million. Well, Consus back down though, but like they're they having some swingy days. Well, he's going to win a few chips back as he's going to get it all in with his ace king. Because he is forced <laughs> to fold. Yeah, these are so really well animated. Bankrupt, you okay. has a suited queen, and he just jams. I think if I'm Usimov, I call here. Like, I, I know it sucks, because you know you're yeah. behind, but Me your too. hand can flop quite well. So Usimov is going to send it. He's going to receive the bad news that spades are no good. He needs an 8 or a 7. Still needs an 8 or a 7 or a 5 to chop. That could be a five. It's an eight. Ooh. Ooh, Ustimov spikes the eight on the river, and we are keeping everyone in the game. Ustimov, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I like that call with eight seven. Like even if you're behind, it's just yeah, you know, no, so, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I guess you're not even that far behind against like an ace deuce offsuit. You know, like mm -hmm. it's pretty close actually. So like, and you know what everyone's thinking is like, this guy Pikachu, let this guy survive with 1.6 or 2 million chips or whatever. If he jumps now, what about Ace-9? Yeah, it's in the muck. It's pretty sure that's in the muck. Okay. Well, when do you start calling? What about Ace-10 suited? Do you call that? No. No? no. That's I think the same I call thing Ace-10 suited. Yeah. Would you call though? We do, let's look at the payouts. No. Not happening. Maybe we play in like smaller field or something. Hmm. Even more fold when the guy was sitting on like two or three million. They, now it starts to get closer and closer, but still. All right. Ace queen suited. 
Yeah, I think I call. <laughs> that's, when, <laughs> that's when I go, you know what? You got it. You got it. Yeah. Because obviously, Ace 10 and the stuff they like, they're not, they're beating Queen Jacks and stuff, but, you know, like they still got two live cards. But like yeah. Ace Queen, now you're more, way too likely to be dominating. What about Ace Jack suited? It's probably pretty close. Um, I think you fold, but if you were in fourth position, you'd call. But third, like, I don't know the actual answer, but that's when you start to go, I hope I don't get dealt that hand. Here, it's like, man, it seems like you really want to jam because chip leader opening trash. You're mm -hmm. sitting in this position. Got some fold equity because he doesn't yeah, want to lose yeah. 12 million chips. Yeah, oh, you got a lot of Ford equity. The only thing I don't want to lose 12 million chips. Mm. I think calling is the worst. Okay. Oh, yeah. Goes wow. For it. Can't believe Pikachu it. Pikachu is going to snap call this one, and God of M3 doesn't like to see that. He's like, uh oh. Here we go, guys. A stand of diamonds with this king offsuit. Bad, bad, bad. GG to up. God of MTT. Seven deuce or a ten though. Seven deuce ten. Could be a ten. Could no, be a ten. It's a ten no, or nine. No. It's a ten again. The tens on the river are delivering. Oh god. Once more console shows us that he had a ten too. <laughs> he hits us with the Yaki running out. 26 million chips for God of MTT. Wow, imagine if he still ends up winning it. My goodness. That's a huge suck out right there, right? Because now, like, everyone else would have got a pay jump. There's still five players to X, so the pay jumps are still going to get bigger. Wow, it's just sick. That is sick. Six, six. And it's your pick, too? Oh, it's even sicker. Like it to be honest, I gave up on the, the whole picking thing when he had four million chips. <laughs> <laughs> really good. So sick. Second time tonight. But that happened. Because you can no longer jam on the God of MTT. <laughs> it would be completely out of line. Still can raise like a two point something million. Yeah, just um, trying to put pressure on. Two sevens will, of course, come along. This hand is mm -hmm. pretty easy to play, blind versus blind, I think. Well, they, you say that. Not easy. You get this. Yeah, I mean, then like, you get this board and you're like, oh, am I really going to fall to like a tiny bed just because there's one jack out there? Yeah. Kind of like, easy wasn't the right word I was looking for, but at least you know where you're at when you flop this set. <laughs> like, you got to call this, right? Yep. 100%. On this board. His opponent, while he's got the big stack, he can't just fire away blindly because if he loses 10 million chips here, you know, like he's no longer mm -hmm. the chip leader. And I hate the whole, if you call the flub, you got to call the turn here. But that six is also a card that should be pretty decent for you. I, the sevens are still good. Yeah. Oh. Seven. The best. Literally the best. Because a spade, sometimes you get screwed over. But the seven, mm -hmm. you know where you're at. You got collecting your paycheck. You think he bets here? I don't know, six million or something. Uh, I guess I think he hopes for a, uh, one of those pot control jacks that Pikachu probably would play. Um, something you don't think a jack would fold. Whatever that amount is, you just bet that amount and it's six million. You and the god of MTT, uh, <laughs> one line. Yeah, but I don't think this King Five will be calling here. Um, just seems on be such a crazy spot for him to all of a sudden be bluffing him. Well, we went from one dominant chip leader to two dominant chip leaders. As bankrupt, you wakes up with queens. The guys, <laughs> I'm in the mix. He got the, remember he had twenty something million. Hasn't played any hands. Been just blinding down. Now he's like, I'm back. Well, he did lose some chips against uh, Uzdimov. Oh, the he two million or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he lost two million chips, Roddy. It was two more than million. two million. It was, it was like three. Okay. <laughs> it's like three. Two to three. Big deal. Um, I'll, well, this is not the floppy I was looking for. 
the Chuck Jack should, should give him some confidence. And uh, Pikachu is cooling down, eh? All, it's so funny how it goes where you're dominating, you're winning every hand, and then all of a sudden it feels like you just can't win a hand anymore. Yeah, but the brutal one is the, the Ace King Ace 10 because it was a big pot too. Mm -hmm. 12 million. Yeah, if he wins that one, he pretty much wins the tournament because the other guys had no chips anyway. And now he knows that even if he makes a deeper run, he's really going to have to battle with the God of MTT. <laughs> Such a perfect name. Especially for a Russian. <laughs> this makes it extra good. Bankrupt you does take this one down with his queen. So he's back to 17. And now all eyes are kind of on Uzdimov. What do you do with tense? It's a bit tricky because you obviously don't want to be the guy that's bust when the other dude has four million chips, but I calling think he's also just, feels really I, weak. Yeah, I think he's just going to call, but you definitely should be jamming this. Um, the forward equity is way too high. Uh, but I kind of getting vibes he's just going to call. Be honest, he wants to kind of jam this ace too suited. He thinks there's a lot of forward equity, which it does. Four million over there is a little too short. I, I do think he's going to call here um, because he's, he's a bit worried, but I think the Ford equity is just way too high of two tens. Mm -hmm. And it would be an awful moment to run into uh, Jack's, Queen's, Kings, or Aces. Yeah. And the Ace, Kings, and Ace, Queens are probably going to call. Maybe Ace, Queen, not always, but Ace, King will. I hope he continues with these two tens here. I know he doesn't. When that's a bad card, though. That's, that's a, a card that's the really card. gonna scare him. I hope Pikachu fires a good amount here 3.8 million or plus. Because if his opponent does not have like a queen 10, he's he's not continuing, right? And obviously, he picked up the flush draw, so it should make you uh, a little more willing to bet. You know, you have a lot of cards on the river that can give you the absolute nuts. That's exactly 3.9. Look at you, Nananoko, waking yeah. up, just calling all these bets. My goodness, these mistakes, guys, zone. you know, we, we, we know. <laughs> I need to find this Beat the Pros tournament. $200, you say? 210 That's yeah. the one. You like Roddy's on free Saturday. money. Mate, actually, the last two weeks, I played, like, most of the time, I, you know, I know I don't play always well because, hey, I don't always have the time and then I'm just kind of firing away. But the last two weeks, I played really well. Obviously, I shared you the King-10 story last week when I had Ace-King and I called four spots before oh, yeah. the money. But all single bullet. And then last Saturday was also single bullet. Very deep run, deep into the money. And then uh, just two sick hands. When, when are you going to... Kevin Martin... Did Kevin Martin win it? Nah, he never won it. But there was uh. one moment where he legitimately made like top 15 uh it felt like three out of five weeks or something and it's a 1k field so that's pretty impressive wow queen Ooh, Pikachu calls makes us. the call king 10 <laughs> versus queen up. five yep wow. lose a few more chips well, it's funny call he calls queen this five. one he yeah, called this one because he's three. like i didn't get rid of him last time <laughs> Man, everyone's just staying alive Monstas hates to see it. He would have liked to pay jump. Pikachu does something wild here. He's going to get punished. If Ustimov does something creative, he's also going to get punished. Don't do it, Pikachu. <laughs> Nothing weird. Probably just going to limp or min race, I guess. Yeah, I think he's respecting his opponent's stack now that he's not going to raise anymore. This is like, how the hell did this happen? How did we find ourselves in a world where you are now raising my limbs? Okay. <laughs> Makes the call with 10 9, flops absolutely nothing. But it's also not a board you love to see with Ace King. Especially not Ace King of clubs, that's for sure. I wonder if Pikachu can find a bet here. Mm, probably not. 
it seems un uncharacteristic because OP Pikachu is really solid. It doesn't make random plays. Try playing with him, mate. It gives you the feeling that he's got aces every second round. I'm going to check it all the way down to the river, and Pikachu makes a pair of 10. Stop pair on the river. That's got to feel pretty good. Five million chips. It's an important one, because if the God of Empathy would have won this one, he would have been our Neil Chip leader in Anoko. From like four million chips to the Neil Chip leader. I don't even know how that happened. Obviously, the ace 10 against ace king. But... Yeah, he should value bet this one. Um, he's like, if you got a better 10, so be it. God of MTT. His opponent hasn't been taking these lines as bluffs yet, so why think he is going to do so now? Good fold. Deuces? Never what? Lucis? 9 6 suited. Is the god of MTT going to gem this? Yeah, the answer is yes. Do the deuces feel like calling? The answer is no. The God of MT wins a few more chips. Still two big stacks, two short stacks, and one that's uh, on the shorter side of things. Consas knows, obviously, that bank drop due is pretty tight. So he is going to jam the jack four of hearts. He's going to win the big blind and the antis. That's nice for him. It's been quite a battle and it's been quite a roller coaster tonight. It's been so swingy for most of them, right? Like Pikachu was basically a never ending upswing until we started cooling down. God of MTT has been everywhere. Konstas has been everywhere. Ustimov has been everywhere. And Bank dropped you. It felt like we were just waiting for him to go out. And all of a sudden he was second in chips. Now he's third in chips, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, everyone's kind of had that emotion roller coaster. Like, I'm I'm doing really well to like, I can't believe I might be out of this tournament to I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. Last time they had a limp pot. Oh, Pikachu is going to raise it up. I he's think there's crack. enough separation in chips where he's like, okay, I'm going to steal. But when they were both had like 33, 35, he's like, I'm going to calm down. Pikachu faults. I kind of think that the God of MTT is going to jam again. Yeah. I like Pikachu opening, though. Seems, seems OP. Yeah. Is that what you would go for? Seems overpowered. King five of hearts under the gun. It's obviously not your sweet dream, but it does look strong if you jam. And he does jam. Konsas makes the call. He's in great shape, but he doesn't want to call off with King Ten suited. Good move here by Ustimov. I uh, obviously because it worked. I like it, but <laughs> takes courage. Yeah, it takes courage for sure. He's trying to outlast Constance now. He's like feeling good. I, I picked the blinds and Andy's now your turn. So yeah. either you close your eyes and you jam and you hope he falls because you know he's been opening loose or you fold yourself. But calling, yeah. there's not too many flops I'm really in love with with A7 offset. Plus, I like folding a little more because you got you actually do have a race with the, the bottom stack guy. Now, uh -oh. if you were... Uh oh Ooh. Hold that thought. Queen, deuce of diamonds against a7 offsuit. Uh, we need a queen or a deuce for Victor. Or he's... There's the deuce! Again, he's deuces. staying alive. Can he avoid well the done. aces and sevens? Nice, nice no, double. it's an ace. It's an ace. How do you know? It's not a nice double. That's an ace, mate. Because only the aces <laughs> look like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of Victor Ustimov. He goes out in fifth place. What a roller coaster there. First he needs help, then he gets help, then he still loses on the river. Means we're down to four. And Pikachu is back to his 50 million chippies. And this should be an all-in between God of MTT and Konstas if Pikachu doesn't open. There we go, Nananoko. Are we down to three? Here we go. Come on. 
Don't think he expected uh, no. to go up against a hand as good as Ace Jack. Obviously, King Queen can still get there. We're gonna need a king or a queen with a seven. We chop, by the way. Seven is a chop. Nope, it's too low. It's gonna be a four. God of MTT knocks out Constas. He gets eliminated in fourth place. Walks away with seventy-one thousand dollars. Not bad, of course, for the original one K that he spent. And we're down to three, Nanoko, just like that. So does bankrupt you order two rounds now, or because he didn't expect two pay jumps that quick? So guys, keep the card. <laughs> Open <laughs> bar. <laughs> Basic. Man, I should have done final table betting because I really would have gone for God of MTT and Pikachu because I was hyping up Pikachu in the pre-show. And I told you that I think he's actually very good and I didn't understand why nobody bet hey. on him and the odds on him were good. I asked you twice, did you want to break the betting and maybe bet? I tried to get you free money two times with Lena 900 and now OP Pikachu and God of MTT. You said, I don't want it. I want to send it to the PLO Russian cash or whatever. Terrible. You gotta listen to me sometimes. Don't show, don't send me hand histories. Listen to my advice. All right. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, Nanaka. Does seem like uh, we are just now playing the waiting game to get rid of bankrupt you. I mean, if he gets a double, especially if he gets it through God of MTT, they're obviously quite even. But I'm just not really getting those vibes. I hope he proves me wrong though. No way. Bankrupt you will still wait it out. He's gonna hope. <laughs> He's gonna hope for the ultimate cooler. Ace, kings, and queens, or something. It's going to have to be legit aces and kings for Pikachu and God of MTT to get it in. That's the ultimate cooler right there, mate. They have the same A6. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, I never think about that, right? Usually, like, oh, you chop it up, but like, oh, reverse suits. A6, three bet. Nice. Big three bet, too. How come every time they get a pay jump, they always like want to get in there real quick? They're like, oh, I just got free monies, free rolling. I mean, since they're three-handed and the blinds are obviously very big, Bankrupt you does need to make some magic happen soon because it's so silly to go down to four big blinds and then you double and then you have eight big blinds and so you need to double again in three hands. Agree, because look, these guys got 40 million. They're not going to they're not gonna bust before you, so you got to make no. your plays soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, he already made the big pay jumps. 95k guaranteed for bankrupt you. I feel like the guy who always plays no hands always gets top three in, the, in our soup, you know, our shows. So like next time you make a final table, Roddy, right, like just don't play anything. Like you might not win it, but you guaranteed second or third. It's pretty good. I do got to say, though, he made the awesome call with Ace-5. And I still feel we've seen plenty of players that fall there, you know, because they look around the table and oh, the other guys are short. But he knew that Ace-5 was probably going to be good there, made the call while well, he could have made it. And that definitely helped him securing top three. So well done. So OP raised. Yeah. And then he's firing now. A7 gonna be, gotta call this one. You're like, you're like, oh, what? You're like, which river card do I want? Like, they're all bad, and this is one of the bad ones. The Seven of Hearts, I think, is the only one that you would have been okay with. Maybe an Ace of Hearts, Ace of Diamonds. You also have the best hand, though. And Pikachu checks. So A7 is good, and the God of MTT gets real close to the stack of Pikachu now. Oh, what a battle between these two is going to be. Look, bankrupt you sur always surprises, okay? Don't be surprised this guy makes it to heads up with 2 million chips. It's possible. And then, <laughs> and then turns it around? Yeah, but he has to overcome, what, 80 million? <laughs> 90 million? Yeah, it's not 2 to 17. It was actually a really good moment to see a flop there with the 7-5 going up against threes, but uh, obviously the man can possibly know that. Is this the hand that he decides to go for it with King-8? If he does, he's absolutely going to get called by the god of MTT. 
I think so. Here we mm -hmm. go. Ace ten of clubs will make the call. And bankrupt you will know that he's gonna need some luck. Kings and eights. It's not the board you're looking for. Not the turn you look for. It's a king or an eight, or we are down. Two heads up. Uh, it's not an eight, I think. Or it could be an eight. Oh, is it? That it is, right? An eight. Oh my it god, is. it is an eight. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What's up with these rivers tonight, Nananako? Yeah, they're always peeling it. I didn't even say it was a guaranteed double, because it wasn't. Wow, nice play. You think Pikachu likes that? Or you think he doesn't like it? No, nah, he doesn't like that for sure. Like, there's a point when you just want the pay jumps, right? Like, because these are big pay jumps. 13 million chips. Imagine this guy doubles again. Like, yeah. nah, this is a terrible scenario. Ow. I wouldn't say it's terrible. He's still the chip leader. <laughs> True. Could be better. Uh... It's very really fun for me to... Uh cover a final table of the guys that I actually play with, you know, like obviously once in a blue moon, I have some of the guys that play the 10 case, you know, if I play a $500 spring series festival, you know, then well, you, you can end up with Lena at your table or some of these other dudes, Arthur, but OP Pikachu and God of M3, I've legit played a lot of hands with. Yeah. yeah, I thought they were always very good. I was like, do I suck or are these guys actually good? And it turns out maybe it's both, you know, <laughs> it's probably both. <laughs> Yeah, and um, the nice thing about the one K here is um, it's a big field, but also all the big name players. Pretty much, I think the majority of the guys that played the Super Nintendo play that tournament too. So mm -hmm. you get some uh, some big a nice mixture of players. It's kind of like the reverse, right? A lot of people you don't know, and then um, some big names. Whereas in Super Nintendo, it's all the big names, and then one or two randoms. You know, it's like. Don't convince him to make another show, okay, Roddy? I don't want no weekly 1K show. And I can't stand a couple more hours with you. No, just, just one. One time a week is good enough for me. It hurts, but I'll take it. <laughs> By the way, how's that battle cruiser doing? <laughs> if you want, I can show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only one who talks about the statue I've had for a year and a half. You shouldn't be able to see that many times. And whenever you stop by my stream, it's always in the back. How big is it? Can show me with your hands. Like I'll show you. you. If you really want to see a battle cruiser, mate, I can show you a battle cruiser. It's pretty big. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty big. Nice. <laughs> so it it already comes like this, or do you gotta assemble it? No, it comes. You just have to put it on the, the base. I see. Pretty cool. I think you have to. The carrier is way bigger now. I'll show you. Pocket fours. Do you know what they say about pocket fours, Nanoko? They never play the hand. No, actually, they always make a set. And the god of entity, he plays with me. He knows. He knows these things. He calls. Doesn't make a set. Damn it. <laughs> but that, but that's when you say they have the best hand and they find I a mean, way. That, to that goes it. without saying, Nanoko. I've never seen pocket fours lose. Let's put. Maybe we should change the saying. <laughs> Fuck it for is always make a set or they're just the best hand. No. Oh. I mean sometimes you have to play your pocket for you can't just check it down. <laughs> the man could have won it pre-flop, on the flop, on the turn. Eventually, you know, there's only so much that pocket force can do for you, no no no. Okay. It, I'm actually wondering when's the last time I hit a set. I feel yeah, like it's, I been it's been a long more than time. five shows, right? Like it's been a while. I know it's very sad. I'm starting to lose my motivation for poker. If pocket fours don't make a set anymore, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I play? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of poker? <laughs> Bankrupt, you decided to jam ace four there from the small blinds. Very standard play. Also goes for it here with queen nine suited. And I like it. Goes back to what we said before. Don't go down to four big blinds because they are not going to get it all in. So if you do get a big double, if you do get a double with your tournament life on the line, let it be an actual double. 
Make sure that you at least go up above 16, 17 bigs. Good move by God of MTT. Disrespectful. 6-5 offsuit. Hey, Nananoko, by the way, it's your favorite blind level. And you haven't said anything. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a good stack size. Remember, too. Clean jack. Well, bankrupt you sitting on... Hold on, let me see. 12 and a half big blinds. I needed to combine the two numbers. Oh, this is it, right? Jam, this jam. Is, this is it. Is they it always king? have ace king. Is it eight on the river it, or is it actually it? <laughs> no, th this is it. Yeah, I'm like, afraid that this is going to be it. There's only so many bullets a man can dodge. Can he find some eights? Nope, not yet. Fuck it. It needs to be an eight and an eight only. He did it before. Can the man do it twice? Nope, that's an ace. It's the ace of clubs. And that means that bankrupt you is out and OP Pikachu and the god of MTT are going to duke it out and heads up. No, 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 go. If I would have bet on two guys, these would have been my guys. <laughs> I really mean yeah. it. Yeah, the two guys you talked about, they're here. Um, this is good to see. You know, hey, if you're playing a one, these kind of tournaments regularly, you deserve to be at the end, not these 10K guys that snuck in here. Mm -hmm. Two to one chip lead. They know each other too, for sure. Like they have battled with each other because I see them in the same tournaments. Uh, they play a lot of the similar yeah. events. But have they battled heads up? Because the truth uh, is, yeah, you play the same tournaments, but it's hard to get the heads up in the same tournaments, even even if you play with each other all the time. No, of course. But I'm sure that for them, it's fun to see a familiar face in heads up too. They're like, oh, I know. You're the guy who always three bets me. You're the guy who always has it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a bit of a battle here. Two to one Chipley for the OP Heath. Yeah, he's had a little swings, but it's been generally smooth sailing for him ever since the hub swing, in my opinion. There was another guy. He was almost out in fifth place. He had three million chips. Yeah. Somehow it's heads up. And let's not forget that this is a very exciting moment for everyone who did final table betting. Only eight players decided to put some chippies on OP Pikachu. Meanwhile, 48 people decided to bet on the god of MTT. Over $10,000 have been wagered on him. Four of those guys that bet on Pikachu has an average bet of $1.50. Okay. So, yes. so those, those other four guys that jumped in there, they just put in hundreds of dollars in there. That's pretty sick, man. 100 bucks, 15 to 1. More than 100. It's like $200 average bet for those guys, yeah. man. It's pretty sick. Or maybe one of them. Maybe a few guys just put 10, and there's one guy who actually bet like 900 on him. Very, very possible. Agents. Ace 10 Agents everywhere. Calling correctly. Mm. Wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't think it's like a bad call. But it is a pretty big bet. Let's see, is Pikachu going to try to grind his opponent down? What's the game oh, plan? I got nice. an MTT. Makes the call and will receive the bad news that the seven did give his opponent a pair. Uh, this is uh, not turning into a very fair fight like this. 70 million against 23. I wanted to ask you, um, mm -hmm. did you, have you been following the Super Millions main? Like, have we got some big stacks out there to talk about? Or I have not been uh, looking at that yet, no. I'm curious. Yeah. I want to know who's in for 100 getting bullets. it in with the nuts in five card Omaha and then drawing that on the turn. That's, that's what I've been doing. Now now. So is it the nuts if it's not the nuts? It's the nuts at that moment. It's the nuts. You know what's <laughs> the worst feeling? I won't tell you this before. The absolute worst feeling is like if you bet pot on the flop with top set on a relatively dry board, but you know that the turn can like spice up everything. And then somebody actually repots it. And then you repot it, and then they just call, and then you're in for like 85% of your money. And then the turn card is just the absolute worst, worst turn card. It completes all the straights and the flushes. And then they go obviously all in, and you've got like 300 bucks left, and you're like, oh my God, it's like, sure, call. And then you they know, want to run it. it twice, and they're like, no, run it once. And then of course <laughs> the board doesn't fare, and you're like, blah, blah, blah. life tilt. <laughs> yeah, that's brutal. 
God of Entity is going to pick up a tiny one here. Jack four versus four three. I think both of them played really well tonight. Uh, at one, but like especially God of MTT early on wasn't particularly running hot, right? He really had to work for it. Nothing really came easy to him. Didn't have any easy spots. Hang in there. Of course, got a little bit lucky later down the line when he was short, but a very good performance by him. Yeah, overall pretty solid. Um, but you know, like this is still a huge heads up match for them, right? We're playing for fifty two k. That's a lot. Some of them yep. probably bigger than some of their biggest wins. Is my, oh, is absolutely. Because a lot of these tourneys, the $200 and $300 tourneys, if you win them, you know, if you win even a bigger one, then it's around 25K to 30K. So, and they play a lot of the smaller ones too, where first place is more like eight to 9,000. So yeah, 52K, definitely a lot of money for both of them. And that's just the difference in heads up, right? They've already locked up that 128k. So it's a, it's a good day for the mid stakers. Mm -hmm. Like I was actually surprised that the uh, GG earnings of God of MT were just around 1 million. But that's not 1 million in one score. That's 1 million the hard way. No, no, no. That's a couple K here, a couple K there. And I'm sure the occasional 20, 30. But that's, uh, there's been a lot of hours of poker for that man. I guarantee you that. Yeah, so his name is like warranted because he actually put in the work. Mm -hmm. That's not a one hit wonder. <laughs> Can't believe we're staring at a Pikachu with the Pikachu surprise face, but then in uh, Ultra HD, and he's about to <laughs> and he's about to win one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. What a life! It's like the weirdest Pikachu one to use. like the using the one from that the like movie. not the cartoon ones, right? Like yeah. the real OP. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Yeah. It is like the Pikachu surprise face meme that everybody uses as meme templates, but then it's like the ultra HD Pikachu from the movie. It's kind of funny because I have never seen that. I've never but I've never seen the movie. I've seen it. It was so-so. Oh. Uh, I watched it on a flight it's before Corona times. So I'm not missing out. Cool. No, I'd be lying if I said it was amazing. Look at the God of MTT. He's picking up a couple of pots. I mean, it starts racking up real quick. And uh, he has kind of closed the gap because 71 million to uh, whatever it was, 21 looked really dire. It just looks a little more doable. He's got some sinister thoughts of this nine do suited. What's the? He does. Nine. The perfect bet size would have been ninety-two million, or nine point two million. Close. You know, whenever I try to get creative, and then sometimes you want to, you just click a certain number, and then it's like six point nine. I'm like, no, 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 because I'm already bluffing. And if I bet six point nine big blinds, they know that I'm like. <laughs> Just messing around. So then I'm like, seven. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no, seven is also like too random. Like 7.1. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 7.1 it is. Ace five of diamonds versus king seven offset. I'm expecting uh, Pikachu to at least stick around and see a flop here. And he does. Flops best. Mid pair. Not bad. Yeah, I'll flop his opponent. Oh, that's uh, not a good one for a god of MTT because he's going to feel committed for some chips here. I think when Pikachu sees this flop check back, he can safely value bet this turn and probably even river. Like, you expect top pair to bet heads up, like, almost always. Mm -hmm. He's going wow. big. That's a great size because, like, I still think the ace five pays off. It's like, well, you look like you got a draw. When they bet this big, they sometimes do that with their really strong hands too, though. True, but more likely on the river. The turn, I think, is mandatory calling. That's a crappy river card for the god of MTT, right? Because if he makes that call on the turn and he thinks his five is good there, why the hell would he be worried about the deuce of diamonds? Yeah, Pikachu. I mean, Pikachu is like, well, I did put in six million chips. This guy's still called. Am I supposed to slow down? But I think his read is right on the turn. Can you go for like 12? 
I mean, the call has got to be scary, though. Wow, he does go for 12. <laughs> I don't see how God of MTT calls here. I think that's an impossible call. This is some this is some serious value betting from Pikachu. Like yeah, I, love, but I told you it. this guy is actually he's so I think he's good, man. I really think he's good. Maybe he's like someone that has actually played a crap ton of poker on a different website, and he just uh, he started watching our show on the Tuesday evening. He's like, you know what? Let's try my luck at GG Poker because if those guys are playing the 10Ks, I'm pretty sure that I can do well there. But I actually think he's a very good player. I hope he drops. It's 10k in this uh anniversary edition like and just makes that final table too that'll be fun i'd be surprised if he wouldn't try a single time after winning this event if he does win it god of mtt he's trying to think about all the hands he's up against and to be fair like he could be good here sometimes like it's mm -hmm. tough he knows his hand is kind of capped he's like well i don't have a nine i know you know that Bit, this is some real poker here. It's just kind of figure out, would you follow through with one more bet if you had like an 8x, 6x type hand? Because mm -hmm. the clubs miss, a lot of the straight rolls have missed. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's going to talk himself into a call. Yeah, very possible. Poor guy. Taking his time, trying to figure out if the five is good or not. Called an over bet on the turn. And the deuce of diamond shouldn't really change a whole bunch. Why did his opponent bet? Bigger than the pot on the turn, and then bets 12 million on the river. Deep in the tank, probably the one of the bigger decisions he's made in a while. Yeah, this, this is tough. You know what's funny as well? It's like this has obviously been an amazing run for him already. Then you go back to our pre show, you remember that he got it all in when there were probably 17 people left with that seven six against the top set wait wasn't that against pikachu too it was these two guys exactly i remember wow. op pikachu actually got crushed on this one yeah i'm taking a look yeah the seven six of diamonds and ten eight queen on the flop two diamonds turn was a five of hearts op pikachu and god of mtt <laughs> that's funny it almost seems spiked. like destiny <laughs> yep and he spiked the four of spades on the river to survive. This is really turning into a, a Rocky movie. So we meet again. <laughs> I told after that hand you were done. This is where he takes a look at ggpoker.tv. He's like, so how long is that delay? Sorry, mate. It's <laughs> it's a long time. God of MTT does make the fold, the correct fold. He was beat by the seven. This does obviously mean that he's back to kind of where he started his heads up better. Yeah, but um, still, that was, I love that turn value bet. Not something you see too often, right? Mm -hmm. Just knowing sick. your best. Very sick. <laughs> What's a good game now? Like, come on, you still got 24 million chips, mate. I think he likes to use it instead of nice hand or good hand. That's a good game. Seven rolls off on the river, which means the six makes a straight. The jack also makes a straight. Slightly more relevant, guys. Sorry, it's been a long evening. <laughs> Goes for the big bet. Pikachu will let go of his pair of fives. Knows it's no good. Level 47. We don't uh, we don't get that far in the high roller super millions. <laughs> I mean, we do, right? Because I've seen the million chip before, so we must. Yeah, only at the super special anniversary editions, mate. Oh, the 100k. Thousand... I'm used to the 100k, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
very different when they start a tournament with 200 entries or 957. King six of diamonds versus four seven offsuit and got shot for Pikachu. Wow, that's for a bet. Yeah, he so he raised the limp with this garbage, firing away. Takes it, Takes down. it down. Grinding. Ah, okay. Well, I forgot about that, guys. <laughs> Break still happened too. Uh, gives us a couple of minutes to get some energy. And in four minutes and 40 seconds, we will continue the heads up battle between OP Pikachu and the God of MTT to figure out who's going to win event number three of the High Rollers Week that's currently taking place over at GG Poker. See you soon. Hello, everybody. Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back, guys, to this time, absolutely, the final hour of week uh, of the, the High Roller Week, event number three, the 1K final table, as we will continue the heads-up battle between OP Pikachu and the God of MTT. Pikachu has got a commanding lead over his opponent. Let's see if he can close it out. Oh, first hand. It, is it important to win the first hand after the break? Set the tone, Rowdy. That seems like something you would say. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think it matters that much, but this is the first time that we're entering the pre shove or the pre flop shove all in territory. And I think that can set the tone a little bit because if you see that a few more times, it obviously becomes more likely that eventually you're going to get a call. Out of MTT, flop stop pair. Not a very tempting flop to continue with 10 7. Backdoor straight draw, but that's about it. It's Two thinking, overs to though. the board. Wow. wow, he's going to oh. check raises. He doesn't have anything, man. Nope. He's just hoping that his opponent's going to play straight forward with this stack size. Expecting just a call here? Yeah, I think so. It's a limp pot. Oh my god, he hit the seven. It's really <laughs> unfortunate for our Russian. When you Such Pikachu, a big you check, you check, you raise this flop. You're thinking if you're gonna win it, they're just gonna fold the flop. You're not expecting to hit the seven, okay? <laughs> kind of weird as well to check raise and check the flop. God of MTT is actually gonna bet three million chips. He's gonna dig his own grave a bit deeper. <laughs> Unless, of course, he can find an ace or a six on the river. Another club would be interesting. Oh, oh my God. That is bad because God MTT might be able to think he can value bet this hand, right? He's got the nut kicker. He expects a deuce probably to bet the turn a good amount. He never expects a seven, you know, though he has a seven. Wow. God MTT could lose a lot of chips here, man. Could lose all of them, but he could also just check. Like sometimes you can also say, like, maybe I should just check. And that is exactly what he does. Yeah. Maybe do you think Pikachu should have bet on this river? Because he basically has the nuts. Maybe. I don't know. It's just a, a hand I don't expect to have, I guess, is the best. It's hard for me to commentate in that point of view. But uh -huh. um yeah. Wow. Jamming seven, six of diamonds into seven deuce. He's value jamming, Roddy. He's 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 OP. Yeah, did I do it right this time? <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> it's not totally, <laughs> but we'll let it slide. You have to play more video games in your life, Nanaka. You'll get onto it. Do you ever play any games, or you have no time? No, I, I like playing games a lot. I used to play games all the time, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to play Street Fighter. Like, I used to go around little tournaments. Oh, uh -oh. who cares about that? Ace, A, and A6. <laughs> G, G. Yep, this is probably going to be it, guys. A6 of Diamonds is going to jam. Ace, 8 of Spades oh. is going to call. And then the God of MTT is going to need to find some sixes or diamonds. And, and there's an overlay. <laughs> there's an overlay in the high roller event. So interesting for both of them. Oh, Two oh. diamonds on the flop, though. Oh, so many outs, an eight, a three, or a diamond, or it's all over. Can he find an eight, three, or a diamond? Could it be an eight? Can it be an eight? It's not. It's a six, and that is not good enough, because that's going to give Pikachu the straight. And that is going to do it, guys. OP Pikachu will be the winner of this 1K high roller and walk away with $170,000. When we started this show, there was a literally $6 bet on him by four people. No one believed we have a 10 minute pre show betting segment. And I was hyping it up a little bit because I've played not an insane amount, but a fair share of hands with him. And I actually labeled him like after the fourth or fifth time that he got the best of me in a pot. I'm like, this guy's just annoying. Like, I should avoid him or be careful because he's clearly owning me. I gotta stay away from him. I thought he was good. I said there was some value in that bet. In the end, a couple of people did put some money on him and it went up to $1,000. And they had an amazing uh, Tuesday, no, 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 because he took it all down. Yeah, and good odds, too. I think at least 10 to 1. Like, that's, 15, that's to one. 15, 15 to 1. 15 wow. to 1, wow. Poker shares did good this, this week, didn't they? Like, <laughs> like, 
It's you don't expect the, this guy with six dollars to win it. I mean, now they gotta pay out a little bit more, but you know it is what it is. Um, congrats on picking. A, oh wait, you didn't pick a winner. You almost picked the winner, Roddy. Not bad. Congrats on winning the final. No, oh, you almost did final table betting. Didn't do that either. Congrats to OP Pikachu. He played great throughout this final table. Um, he. Once he got that little run up to like 25, 30 minutes, I think, oh, it was the Ace is Ace King hand, right? That was the really big one for him against uh, Constance. He just kept on stepping the pedal to the metal. Like, um, sure, he had a little swing here and there, but he didn't get down to 3 million like all the other guys out there. He didn't run it back up. But uh, he played great. I thought God of NCT played really solid too. Came into chip lead, got second place. It's a very good score. You didn't win it, but. You know, he wasn't really in a position to win in this heads up at any point. No. So, good scores from the mid stage guys. All the big crushers out in ninth, eighth, you know, and in seventh place was the next highest stake player. He was out and they just got, they got beat up today. They got, I don't know if beat up's the right word, but hey, because you did get an aces versus queen, but they lost. They lost. Now, I actually really enjoyed watching these guys play. It was very interesting for me because it's a bit different. You know, I don't get to see. Uh, you have a lot of history with the guys that play the 10Ks. You play with them in the past. And I've obviously played a lot of tournaments over the last few months. And I was like, yeah, I actually think that these guys are legit good players. And I always wondered how they would do at one of our final tables. And then we could see all their cards and kind of get an idea of how they approach the game. I think it's safe to say that uh, they absolutely know what they're doing. And they look good, well deserved, and I think it's a very well deserved top two. Maybe a little shout out to Zagos, who gave us a lot of fireworks early on. Just got a bit unlucky in a few of the big spots. Lost all of his chips with that ace four of spades hand. If that didn't happen, I had the feeling that Zagos could have done some damage too tonight, because he also looked good. Yeah, he looked pretty good. Um, but you know, like, we gotta give it to Constance. Like, of the real name ID players, he really had a lot of action in there. He was flat calling. He had a game plan from the beginning. Before the final table starts, like, I'm gonna smooth, I'm gonna call a lot of spots in position. I think I can outplay them post flop. And to be fair, I think he played a pretty, really good post flop. Um, the big hand he lost, you know, aces to ace, kings, ace king suited to aces. Like, what is he gonna do in that spot, right? Like, it's just a mandatory go for it spot. Um, he played really well. He's still got a reasonable score here. I think he got fourth or fifth. I can't remember which one it fourth. was, but he fourth. did did amazing, played great. And he gave me Dan Bilzerian emojis. I saw a lot of them today. I'm, I'm a happy man, great week. Uh, it's a great show today. And next week, it's gonna be lit. Yep, next week, of course, guys, we go back to what we always do on the Tuesday, and that is called the High Roller Super Millions, the weekly 10K, and it's a very special one. It's part of the High Roller Week, but it's extra special because it is our one-year anniversary. It took Nanonoko one year to realize that Pocket Force actually just never make a set, guys. <laughs> they, they just don't have it. But uh, yeah, Nanonoko, can you believe it? Closing in on one year of the Tuesday evening for me, Wednesday morning for you. You've learned so much about battle cruises, carriers, and all these other things in life that you never knew you wanted to know about. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's pretty sick. Uh, I'm very excited for the next show. I don't know who the final nine is going to be, but they're going to be playing for a big prize pool since it's five million guarantee. Um, I hope we get a little Lena 900 in there and Adamo personally, but you know, there's a lot of good names. Uh, it it's going to be really nice. If it's not Lena 900, it better be Arthur or Mr. Gamble, though, because I feel like we've built up a real connection over the year. It would be really fun to see uh, maybe Ben make an appearance again, because we didn't see Ben CB too often, but when he did make it, he often gave us a good show, and of course, won it once. It's been uh, definitely an amazing year. I'm already excited for next Tuesday. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this slightly different final table, but I thought it was really fun, uh, really cool to see these guys play, and I think they played well. But once more, congrats to OP Pikachu. Just stay away from me, mate, because you're too good. And congrats to the God of MTT as well for that second place. Very well deserved. I think that's going to do it, Nanonoko, unless you have anything else you really want to share with the people out there. No, I'm just, I'm super excited for next week. I know it's going to be one of our best shows. All right. Well, guys, same time, same place next week. Hope you guys have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. Goodbye. Good luck at the tables.
Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best. 